It's time for Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Wolverine Football is also brought to you by the Triangle Bar and Grill, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home, LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center, the Law Offices of Owen Seaman, Bush Brothers Car Care, the Barber's Inn in Swissvale, LG3 Entertainment, Web Landings, A-Boss Opticians, Matthews Auto Service, and Dazubin Dental Associates. Now it's time for the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. A pleasant good afternoon, or good evening rather, and welcome to Seneca Valley High School in Harmony, Pennsylvania. Adam Gusky and Eric Shuley on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network as Woodland Hills not only steps out of uh, conference, but they also step out of classification as they take on the 6A Seneca Valley Raiders. Seneca Valley is 4-2, and 5-2 on the season, 4-2 and two within 6A play. They come off of an 18-0 win against Hemfield. Meanwhile, Woodland Hills 2-5 and five on the year. They are 1-4 and four within the Allegheny 8 Conference. Last week, they defeated Kiske as they played in 5A ball, but out of conference uh, in that 47-0 victory against the Kiske Cavaliers at the Wolverina last Friday night. Bring in Eric Shuley now. And Eric, as we take a look at this football game, Woodland Hills, a big test against a big 6A school. Absolutely. A big 6A school with a great defense, Adam. This team, the most points they've given up all season is 20, and that was against a very good Central Catholic team. So it's going to be another tough battle for the Wolverines offense. They've been getting better each week, and hopefully they can do it again tonight against, as I said, very tough defense and also a good offense with a good quarterback in Gabe Lawson. We're going to step away for a couple of minutes, and when we return, pregame coverage continues. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School. Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd District since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 412-241-6690 or log on to SenatorCosta.com. The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale is a proud sponsor of the Wolverines and has been serving the Woodland Hills community for nearly three quarters of a century. The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swissvale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're going to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home with locations in East Pittsburgh and Turtle Creek is a member of the Hall of Excellence of the National Funeral Directors Association. This reflects the same pursuit of excellence by our Woodland Hills football team, cheerleaders, marching band, students, staff, and faculty. For over 110 years, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been honored to serve local families and to be a proud partner of the Woodland Hills communities. Life has its ups and downs. There are times when you or a loved one needs help. That's why you should know the name LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center. Located just minutes from the Monroeville Mall, the LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, has been known by locals for many years, and they excel in reputation, rehabilitation, recuperation, and residential living. The help and answers you need are just a phone call away at 412-825-9000. Also on the web at lgar.org. LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, a a name you should know and a name you can trust. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Back at Seneca Valley High School, Adam Gusky, Eric Schuling on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. We thank you for joining us no matter which one of our affiliates you're watching or listening from. Again, Woodland Hills takes on Seneca Valley as they step out of classification, taking on the 6A Seneca Valley Raiders. 
And Eric, earlier in the pregame show, we touched on the Seneca Valley offense a little bit. Their defense, very, very stout. Uh, they're only allowing seven points per game. Meanwhile, Woodland Hills comes off of their best offensive performance of the season. Yeah, only seven points per game, Adam. They have three shutouts on the year, so the defense has been, been doing a lot for Seneca Valley. But like you said, the offense has been getting better for Woodland Hills, improving every week. We've been able to see the arm of Gavin Judson working very well with a multitude of receivers for the Wolverines and Jay Smith and Mike Coleman and Josh Rawlings and Jaden Lucas. So we'll see if the Wolverines can step up for this big test tonight against the Raiders defense. And Eric, I know I only saw half of the game a week ago, but you, you talk about how Woodland Hills started to distribute that football. And I think that was key to getting that offense rolling. And they're going to have to do it tonight against a very stout defense. Definitely, definitely. We're going to see guys like Anthony Meredith and William Clark carrying the load, running the ball. But hopefully that can open up the pass for the Wolverines. And again, we can see Gavin Judson showcase that strong arm and the guys in the, in the field and the receivers showcase their shiftiness and speed. We're going to step away one final time here in the pregame show. When we return, we'll get you set for kickoff. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Ladies and gentlemen. Woodland Hills Football is brought to you in part by the law offices of Owen Seaman. Owen is a Woodland Hills alumnus who studied law at Duquesne University and has been practicing law in the Pittsburgh area for over 15 years. Attorney Owen Seaman's experience encompasses virtually every facet of criminal defense. If you find yourself in need of criminal defense representation, call Owen at 412-721-0412 or visit owenthelawyer.com. There are a few things that guys like more than a great haircut at a real barber shop. And at the Barber's Inn on Washington Avenue in Swissvale, you'll find both. Plus, you can relax in style on supple leather sofas while watching their big screen HD TV. You can even shoot some pool while you wait. But most importantly, you'll walk out the door with a haircut or shave that you're sure to love. Walk-ins are always welcome at the Barber's Inn. For more information, call 412-271-7434. And remember, real men come to the Barber's Inn. LG3 Entertainment is a first-class disc jockey and karaoke entertainment company that serves the Pittsburgh and surrounding areas. They offer a wide range of music entertainment for weddings, anniversaries, school dances, corporate events, and more. They also offer beautiful chair cover linen rentals to give your event the elegance it deserves. They offer many more services, so go to their website today and see why so many choose LG3 Entertainment for the best in family fun entertainment. Whether you need a new website or want to improve your existing site, Web Landings can serve your needs. Web Landings provides professional, easy-to-maintain websites for businesses, organizations, and individuals. Discover more at weblandings.com and find out how editing your site can be as easy as using a word processor. Plus, we offer one year of free hosting for any website developed. Visit weblandings.com today. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Nearly set for kickoff here in Harmony, Pennsylvania. Adam Gusky, Eric Julie on the call for you on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Paint the picture for our radio audience. Far sideline of the Woodland Hills Wolverines. They wear their road white uniforms, white jerseys, white pants, turquoise numerals with the black trim and the turquoise helmets with the black ears and stripes. Near sideline are the Seneca Valley Raiders. They wear their home black uniforms, black jerseys, black pants, white numerals with the powder blue or Carolina blue trim. Plus they wear the uh, white lids with a light blue SV emblazoned on both sides of their helmets. Woodland Hills will kick off to begin this football game. Chucky Hanchett will boot it away for the Wolverines and we're underway in Harmony, PA. This one will go back to around the five yard line where it will be returned by Seneca Valley's uh, Brennan Hayes and Hayes is brought down as he crosses the 25 out towards the 27 yard line and that's where Seneca Valley will start the game with the football. Pretty good job by the Wolverines special teams unit there. Against West Allegheny was tough on that kickoff return, losing that game as, by way of that long return. But Wolverines stand tight there and keep Hayes from going any further than 27. So the Raiders bring the receivers out to the line of scrimmage. The linemen huddle and then come to the line of scrimmage. And Gabe Lawson is 
in the shotgun with sidecar to his right hand side. Trips to the right, one receiver to the short side left. Play action. Lawson looks to the near side. The pass is complete. And the tackle is made by a couple of Wolverines after a gain of about 10 yards after the uh, reception by Jake Stebbins. The tackle made by Jay Smith. And the Raiders found the hole in the defense there, Adam, and great job by Lawson to find him and make a nice throw in there and pick up the first down of the night for the Raiders. Again, Seneca Valley will send the receivers out of the huddle early and they'll split trips to the left, the wide side. The ball on the right hash, the one receiver to the short side right as Lawson in the shotgun with the sidecar to his left hand side. And he's going to hand off this time. Hesitation by the ball carrier and he'll get to the line of scrimmage and no further. Ball carrier Matt Stanger. Matt Stanger and Stanger is brought down by a few Wolverines right at that line of scrimmage. Brings up second down and 10. Anthony Meredith leads the charge for Woody High. Raiders definitely like to pass the ball. We're going to see a lot of that I'm sure. Mix in the run. But you got a quarterback like Gabe Lawson who can really hurt you on the ground. He averages over 100 yards rushing on the year. Lawson going to step under center this time with Stanger behind him. Two receivers to the wide side left, and Stanger has a hole, has a crease. He's up towards the first down marker. They're going to give him 11 yards before the tackle is ultimately made by Jaden Lucas. Nice run by Stanger there. And like you got a generous spot at the end there. Might have been looked like he might have been a little bit short initially. But Seneca Valley's going to get another first down, and they're right at midfield about. Yeah, the ball at the 48 on the right hash. Two receivers left, a wing to the right of the formation. Stanger, the lone setback. Now the motion to an eye backfield. Handoff. Stanger has another crease, drives his way forward down towards the 40 yard line. They'll say he's down at the 41 yard line. Jay Smith makes the tackle for Woodland Hills. It's a gain of 11. Make it a gain of almost 12, quite frankly, as that ball's inside of the 41, and it'll be first and 10 for Seneca Valley in Woody High territory. Yeah, this line, a lot of big boys on this line for Seneca Valley. You watch film, you know they can push teams around and hope the Woodland Hills defense can stand up to them. Trips to the left, one receiver to the short side right. Play action. As Lawson rolls to his left, throws to his left-hand side. The pass is complete on the reception for Seneca Valley is Jake Stebbins. Stebbins, his second catch of the game. Pick up of six to the 35, and Seneca Valley continues to move the ball efficiently. Very well orchestrated drive here so far for Seneca Valley. Mixing it up well and keeping the Wolverines on their heels. First time in a long time Woodland Hills has played against Seneca Valley. In fact, this is uh, just the second time in the regular season this century that Woodland Hills has taken on Seneca Valley. Lawson steps under center with an eye backfield behind him. Two receivers to the wide side right, the ball in the left hash as the handoff will go to Stanger and Stanger gets met one yard deep in the backfield and is driven to the turf. Tackle on the play by Taylor Brooks, also in on the stop, Caleb Brevard. Very nice play by the Wolverines out of clog, clog that hole up quick and put them in their first third down situation of the night. Third down and five for Seneca Valley. The line to gain is the 31. The ball is at the 36 of the Wolverines. Three receivers to the wide side right. One receiver to the short side left. Lawson out of the shotgun. Sets up the screen and they've got a lot of room on this screen. As uh, the ball carrier Stanger off to the races. Gets shoved from behind. Able to maintain his balance and into the end zone he goes for a 36-yard touchdown on the screen pass. And Wolverines got burnt on that one, Adam. They just could not defend that screen. And Stanger was able to keep his footing and take it all the way to the end zone for a touchdown after a couple missed tackles by the Wolverines. Seth Winters is going to come on to attempt the PAT as Woodland Hills is down 6-zip early. 8.37 to play, in fact, here in quarter number one. The holder is the quarterback, Lawson, and the kick is up, and that kick is good for Seth Winters. And with 8 minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Seneca Valley 7, Woodland Hills zip. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa.
State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd district since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 412-241-6690 or log on to SenatorCosta.com. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. 36-yard screen pass to Matt Stanger, and Seneca Valley steps out on top of Woodland Hills. 7-zip early here in quarter number one. A well-executed screen, and Stanger lost his balance, then got shoved and still was able to keep his feet under him. As he found his way into the end zone. Seth Winters' PAT was good, and then Seth Winters' kickoff carries into the end zone over the head of Anthony Meredith. It'll be first and 10 for Woodland Hills with the ball at their own 20. Winters, very strong leg there. That's going to negate uh, strength for the Wolverines in the return game. He's able to kick it into the end zone, but hopefully he doesn't have many opportunities to have kickoffs. Woodland Hills will take the ball center of the field at the 20-yard line. Gavin Judson, the quarterback for Woody High, will step under center, sending one receiver to either side, tight end to the left of the formation, and an eye backfield behind Judson. Hand off. Meredith driving his way to the line of scrimmage, shoving the pile. He picks up maybe a yard. Bottom of the pile for Seneca Valley is Evan Smith. And a gain of one brings up second down and nine. Not much doing there for Anthony Meredith, like I, as I mentioned before, on the offensive line, lots of big boys. Same thing on the defensive line for Seneca Valley, and they got a lot, so they don't have to have a lot of guys going both ways. Ball remains in the middle of the field. Second and nine for Woody Hyde. Judson under center with an eye backfield. One receiver to either side. Judson hands off, counter to Meredith. Sliding his way forward, he'll drive his way out towards the 22-yard line. And he won't get any further than that. And that brings up third down and eight. So we're going to have to see Judson go to the air here. Pretty much the same thing, Adam, just the other direction. Not much doing either way. So it's third and eight for Seneca Valley with the football, or for Woodland Hills, rather, at their own 22-yard line. Judson. He's in the shotgun with a bunch to his right. One receiver to the short side left. Judson rolls to the right. Throws to the right. Has a receiver wide open. That's Jaden Lucas. He's got the first down and more into Raiders territory. Sidestepping a man and then finally forced out of bounds. They'll say at the 50-yard line. Apparently that right foot stepped out there, but a big pickup for Woodland Hills of 28 yards. And it's first and 10 for Woody High at the midfield stripe. Just a great job there all together, Adam. Gavin Judson taking the snap, rolling out to his right. And just making a very nice throw to Jaden Lucas, who was absolutely wide open. Nobody even close to him. And some nice yardage after the catch. Big first down for the Wolverines. Sets the ball at the right hash at the 50-yard line. Wolverines will have two receivers to the wide side left, one to the short side right. Sidecar to the right of Judson. And he is going to try to hand off to Meredith. The ball had sprung loose. I don't know if Meredith wasn't anticipating the handoff or what happened, but Judson was fortunate to grab that ball out of the air, lean his way forward, get close to the line of scrimmage. It will be ultimately a loss of one, bringing up second and 11. Not sure if Judson was saw a hole there and wanted to keep it, and Meredith saw a hole and he wanted to keep, take it. <laughs> what happened there? But luckily, Judson able to keep hold of the ball. And taking a look at that replay. Definitely some miscommunication one way or the other. Two receivers to the wide side left, one to the short side right. And uh, Woodland Hills with a pre-snap penalty. And a week ago, we talked about how that was an issue for Woodland Hills. So many pre-snap penalties throughout the season. Fortunately, last week it didn't mean much for Woodland Hills. They just steamrolled Kiske here in this game against a team like Seneca Valley out of 6A. It's, it's a rough one. It's really going to hurt you in a, in a game like this. You cannot continue to shoot yourself in the foot. Let's hope that is the, that is one of very few pre-snap penalties tonight for the Wolverines. Again, Seneca Valley 5-2 and two on the season, 4-2 and two in WPIAL 6A play. Only one conference in 6A, three conferences in 5A. 
Woodland Hills in the Allegheny 8. Judson looks right, throws right, and the pass is intercepted over on that far sideline. With the INT is Ryan Christabak, and he will finally be brought down inside of the 30 near the 28-yard line. Looks like they're going to spawn at the 29, but a big interception there gives Seneca Valley the ball deep into Woodland Hills territory. I'm not sure if there's some miscommunication there, maybe a wrong route run. But unfortunately now the Raiders are going to be knocking on the door of the red zone and looking to go up by two touchdowns. Looked like Davian Rochelle was the intended receiver, but uh, receiver and quarterback not on the same page. And that allowed Kristabak to come in there and grab a hold of that football and return it, they'll say, to the 30-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for the Raiders. They'll send trips to the right of the formation. One receiver to the short side left as the ball's on the left hash. Quarterback Lawson in the shotgun. Sidecar to his right. Lawson's going to run to the right. He has some room inside of the 25, and they'll mark him down near the 22-yard line. So pickup of eight on the quarterback keeper to the right-hand side. Yeah, they're going to go hurry up here, and the Wolverines don't look, quite look ready for it. But they're ready, and they're set. Offset eye backfield is this time the handoff's going to go to Stanger, and Stanger runs to the right, bounces off of two Wolverines, finally brought down at the 10-yard line. A hard run there by Stanger before Christopher Jones makes the tackle, and it'll be first and goal for Seneca Valley at the 10. Yeah, just not, not up to par on the tackling, and they've had some trouble all year, the Wolverines have, again with the hurry up. Stanger up the gut, driving his way inside of the five, wrestling his way down towards the two-yard line before he is finally brought down. Anthony Meredith on the tackle, also in on the stop for Woody High, Jeffrey Williams. So second and goal inside of the five, and flags fly before the snap. See if we get a false start here. And that's the call by the referee, and that'll back up Seneca Valley five yards. So instead of second and goal, at the two, it'll be second and goal at the seven for Seneca Valley. Seneca Valley scoring on their first drive on a 36-yard touchdown pass on a screen to Matt Stanger. Woodland Hills took the ball out to midfield, then an interception thrown by Gavin Judson. Seneca Valley took it to the Woodland Hills 30. A couple of plays later, Seneca Valley finds themselves second and goal, they'll say, at the eight-yard line for the Raiders. Pistol formation this time with Stanger behind Lawson. And flags before the snap again. Looked like the tight end on the right-hand side moved early, Jake Stebbins. That's going to back up Seneca Valley five more yards from the eight to the 13. So it's now second and goal at the 13 instead of second and goal at the three. Gives the Wolverines a chance to make a couple substitutions there. Howells and Meredith, Antoine Meredith that is, coming into the game. Trips to the left of the formation, one receiver to the short side right. Pistol formation. Now Lawson will have the running back settle to his left-hand side. Lawson runs left, hesitates, now springs free. Runs to that far boundary, he's going to be strung out, wrapped, spinning, and then finally brought down at the 10-yard line. They'll say to the 9, actually, for a pickup of 4, and it's third and goal at the 9. Nice job by the Wolverines there. Let him get a little bit of yardage, but ultimately not letting him get through a big hole and get into the end zone. Able to contain him decently. Tavian Brooks ended up making that tackle after Lucas was there initially. So third and goal, ball at the nine. And the ball on the left hash. So they'll send trips to the right of the formation. And whistles blow. They're going to wind the clock here. And it's apparently the game clock had stopped momentarily. Lawson straight drop back. Looks to his right-hand side. Finds a receiver right around the five-yard line, but not much room there for Luke Smith as Smith is wrapped and brought down by Anthony Meredith at the five. And that'll bring up fourth and goal, and the field goal unit comes on for Seneca Valley. And if the first kickoff of the game and the first PAT of the game were any indication, this should be reasonably easy for Seth Winters. Certainly, Adam, he's got a very strong leg, and this is not a far kick. But a great job by the Wolverines defense there, keeping them out of the end zone. This will be a 22-yard field goal attempt, basically dead center out of the hold of Gabe Lawson. Good snap, hold down, kick up, and that kick by Winters is good. And with three minutes and 17 seconds remaining in quarter number one, Seneca Valley leads Woodland Hills 10 to nothing. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa.
The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale is a proud sponsor of the Wolverines and has been serving the Woodland Hills community for nearly three quarters of a century. The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swissvale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're going to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Back at Harmony, PA, where Woodland Hills trails Seneca Valley 10 to nothing with 3.17 to play in the first quarter. Seneca Valley drove down the field on their first possession of the game. Woodland Hills on their first possession turned it over, and the Raiders on a short drive ended up with a field goal after taking over at the Woodland Hills 30. This Hanging kick by Winters will be returned by the Wolverines around the five-yard line. An initial slip, and now off to the races goes the Woodland Hills return man. It's Anthony Meredith out across the 45, and he'll be brought down at the 49-yard line. And Woodland Hills, decent field position, though we saw them in this same exact spot on the previous drive. Turn it over. Yeah, that was a great return by Anthony Meredith. And as we said before, we thought that Winters was, was going to be kicking it into the end zone all night. But this time, the Wolverines get a chance at a return. And one of the several dangerous return men that the Wolverines have, this time Anthony Meredith, able to bring it up to First midfield. 10, Woodland Hills ball spot at their own 49. Woodland Hills starting at their own 49-yard line. Pistol formation. Twins to either side. Judson's going to hand off to William Clark and knifing through and making the play in the backfield, Jake Stebbins. Yeah, we're going to be seeing that a lot, Adam. This big boys on this line for Seneca Valley, they are tough. And as we mentioned, the defense has been very good all season, only giving up seven points a game. I do not think the Wolverines are going to have that much success running the ball tonight. Yes, yeah, Stebbins came from the right outside linebacker, blitzed in there on the run blitz and made the stop in the backfield. A loss of about three brings up second down and 13 from just outside of the 46-yard line and flags Play. before the snap. Looked like Jay Smith, the slot on the right, moved early. And that's going to back Woodland Hills up their second pre-snap penalty of the game. Now, Seneca Valley has two, Woodland Hills has two. And Seneca Valley, their pre-snap penalties may have taken four points off of the board. That's a very good point, Adam. They put them, threw them back a little bit, and then they could not get into the end zone and had to go settle for the field goal. Yeah, instead of second and goal at the three, it ended up being two in a row false starts back in the second and goal at the 13, and they had to settle for that field goal, like we said. Now it's second and 18 with the ball at the 41. Judson rolls to his left. Settles and throws. Has Josh Rawlings wide open. Oh, he had it in his hands at the 31-yard line and just pulled, couldn't pull it into his gut. He had gotten a step away from Josh McLean, but just couldn't haul it in. And he had a lot of greenery in front of him had he caught that football. Very tough break there for the Wolverines. I think Rawlings tried to do something a little strange with his hands there and, and when he tried to bring it in and unable to make the catch. And it's a shame because it was a very nice throw by Judson. It was just hard to track down by Rawlings. 2-10 to play in the first quarter. Seneca Valley leading Woodland Hills 10 to nothing. Woodland Hills facing a third down and 18. The ball on the right hash at their own 42-ish yard line. Two receivers to the wide side left, one to the short side right. Tight end on both sides. Judson settles, now steps forward. He's wrapped and sacked. The pressure came in there and Judson couldn't step up into the pocket fast enough to elude Sage Lay. Yeah, that's, that's not good for the Wolverines. Adam. They only rushed three men that time, and they were able to get instant pressure on the front from the Wolverines, and that's just not what you want to see from your offensive line. Lay, linebacker, 6'2", 220. Previous play made in the backfield by Jake Stebbins, linebacker, 6'2", 220. Low snap, Chucky Hanchett gets the punt away, a wobbler as he was pressured as he booted away. Takes a bounce in favor of the Wolverines, and the ball will settle back towards the 40-yard line where it'll be downed by Woody High. Not a big net punt there for Chucky Hanch. It'll just be a 22-yard net punt as this ball will be set at the Seneca Valley 40. A good starting field position for the Raiders, and hopefully the defense now can make something happen and get a turnover to flip this field for the Wolverines. Just under 90 seconds to play in the first quarter. Seneca Valley leads Woodland Hills 10-zip. Ball on the left hash for the home Raiders. They'll bring trips to the right of the formation. One receiver to the short side left. Lawson in the shotgun. 
He has a wing settled to his right-hand side. Lawson hard count. He'll receive the snap, run forward, nowhere to go. Sidney Summers is in the backfield waiting for him. Really, really nice job of the Wolverines there. That's the strength of the run defense for the Wolverines. Did a great job clogging that up, not letting the dangerous Lawson get through. Loss of four on the play brings up second down and 14 with the ball at the Seneca Valley 36. It'll be closer to midfield, but the Raiders will keep trips to the right. One receiver to the far boundary left. Lawson in the shotgun, Stanger to his right. Play action, Lawson pressured, steps to his right-hand side some more. Throws, and the pass is bobbled and incomplete. It was in the hands of the receiver, Jake Stebbins, and then Stebbins lost it on the way down. And that'll bring up second, or rather third down and about 13. The ball back at the 37. And as you heard the PA announcer, a flag on the play. Go check in with the Woodland Hills coaches. So it's against Seneca Valley, and it's an ineligible receiver downfield against the Raiders. Coach Boster declines that penalty, and that'll bring up that aforementioned third and 13. I think it's a pretty good decision there. Don't You don't want to give this offense too many opportunities, even though it would have backed them up more. This is still a third and long, so I think take your chances here and hope you can get this big stop. 47 seconds to go in the first quarter. Raiders with the ball at their own 36 on third and 14. Two receivers to the right and two to the left as well as Lawson is by himself back there in the shotgun. Lawson has time, throws down the middle, a receiver wide open, it's Jake Stebbins, and Stebbins is brought down as he got behind Michael Roman, and Roman makes the tackle at the 18-yard line, and I don't think Michael Roman thought he needed to be in coverage there. You could see when he got up, he threw his hands up in the air like there was a coverage breakdown and also a flag on the play. So maybe a flag against Woodland Hills on the tackle. I think, Adam, it might be taunting. Stebbins ah. came up and did a big first down move like Le'Veon Bell-esque. And that, to me, is just a little much for high school. Tone it down on a play like that. You know, and I, I don't disagree, and only because it is the high school level. I think, you know, at the pro level, you see that happen. Kids start to emulate that, especially in a game where it's already 10-0 with 40 seconds to play in the first quarter and Seneca Valley with the ball deep inside of Woodland Hills territory. Good to see them flag that. I'm actually watching film of this game, of, of, excuse me, Seneca Valley's earlier game in the year against Central Catholic. Stebbins actually did the same exact thing early in that game when he got up and didn't get a taunting flag on that, and, but he got it tonight. So maybe he learned his lesson. Well, instead of first and 10 at the Woodland Hills 18, it'll be first and 10 for Seneca Valley at the Woodland Hills 33. Clock winding now under 30 seconds to play in the first quarter. Again, the Raiders on top of the Wolverines. By a score of 10 to nothing. Two receivers to the wide side right, the ball on the left hash, wing to the left, one back set. The snap is fumbled. A mass of humanity down at the bottom of the pile. Lawson will come out of there with it as a Wolverine couldn't come out of there fast enough with the ball. Divine Clark could dove in late to try to rip it away from Lawson to no avail, and it'll be second and 10. Would have, been, would have been a huge turnover there for the Wolverines. They were able to jump on that one, but Lawson was able to get back on it. No Wolverines were right there, so it gave him time to see it and jump back on it. Quarter one in the books. Seneca Valley leads Woodland Hills 10-0. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Life has its ups and downs. There are times when you or a loved one needs help. That's why you should know the name LGAR. Health and Rehabilitation Center. Located just minutes from the Monroeville Mall, the LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center has been known by locals for many years, and they excel in reputation, rehabilitation, recuperation, and residential living. The help and answers you need are just a phone call away at 412-825-9000. Also on the web at lgar.org. LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center, a name you should know and a name you can trust. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Seneca Valley with the football to begin quarter number two inside of Woodland Hills territory at the 33-yard line. It's second and 10 for the Raiders at the Woody High 33. Ball's on the left hash for Seneca Valley, the home team in the all-black uniforms. 
with the white lids, while Woodland Hills on the far sideline wears the white uniforms with the turquoise lids. Lawson will set in the shotgun, trips to his right, sidecar to his right. This time it's Meinweiser. <laughs> As Lawson rolls right, throws to his right-hand side, and the pass is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Getting open was Luke Smith. He had it in his bread basket and just dropped the rock. Yeah, it was a great pass by Lawson. He was wide open after he broke on that route. And unfortunately for the Raiders, he was unable to bring it in. But a big break for the Wolverines there. Hopefully they can take advantage of it and not give up another third and long. Third and ten, the clock stopped seven seconds into the second quarter. Seneca Valley 10, Woodland Hills 0. Adam Gusky, Eric Shuley on the call for you in Harmony, Pennsylvania in this non-classification matchup in the WPIAL. Trips to the right, one receiver to the short side left. Lawson shotgun, straight drop back, setting up the screen. It's tipped, oh, and falls to the turf incomplete. Nice job there by Antoine Meredith. He read it just in enough time to sag back enough and knock that pass. He almost was able to intercept it, but it was tipped. Then it almost fell into the hands of Stanger, but still the incomplete pass brings up fourth. And in that no man's land where you don't want to punt, and it's probably too far for a field goal. Yeah, just a nice play by Meredith. We, Wolverines did not get burnt on it like they did the first time for the touchdown for the Raiders. But, you know, Gabe Lawson is also the punter for the Raiders, so probably step back here and pooch one. It looks like that may be what they do. And they said that uh, before the game, Lawson does do that. And you can see here he's deeper than that average five-yard shotgun. He's about seven yards back, and he'll step in, and a knuckler will bounce into the end zone for a touchback. It'll be first and 10 for Woodland Hills at the 20. Yeah, big stop for the Wolverines defense. If they want to stay in this game, that was key to not let them go up by three scores there. So hopefully the Wolverines offense is able to orchestrate a very nice drive here. We'll see what Coach Bostard opts to do. We saw a couple of good defensive stands there by Woodland Hills after Seneca Valley turned the football, or took the ball away from Woodland Hills. And then there they drove into Woodland Hills territory and then Woodland Hills stymied the drive. Next week, Woodland Hills on the road at Moon, taking on the Tigers in a conference matchup, and Eric Shuley will be on the call for you for that one next week. Shotgun for Judson. He'll motion Jay Smith from right to left, and Smith's going to take the handoff on the jet sweep, running to the far boundary. Sidesteps one Raider, slides through another tackle, and is brought down at the 28-yard line for a gain of eight. Saw that jet sweep last week, worked to perfection a couple times. Jay Smith took one to the house for the Wolverines. Nice first down run there, and that's what they got to do, get to the edge, spread out the Raiders, and you know don't don't go right into their strength, which is their, top, their really big defensive line. Run away from it, stretch it out. That'll bring up second down and about two for Seneca Valley, or for Woodland Hills, rather, at their own 28-yard line. One receiver to the short side left, two to the near side right. Hand off, Meredith tries to run to his right. He'll hesitate and then get brought down at the line of scrimmage. Meredith didn't have a whole heck of a lot of room and was fortunate to get back to the, lo the line of scrimmage to bring up third and two. Yeah, after a great play like on first down, it's tough to see that on second down because now you're stuck in a very tough third and short. Against a very good defense. Devin Smith making the tackle for the Seneca Valley Raiders. So third and two for Woodland Hills. The line to gain is the 30-yard line. The ball is in the middle of the field at the 28. Twins right, one receiver to the far boundary left. Judson delay handoff. Hesitation by the ball carrier, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. No further again. Yeah, a, I was worried that's what the Wolverines were going to try, and unfortunately it just did not work. It, nothing doing up the middle all night, and thought that was going to work, but the, Ra the Raiders read that well. Too many black jerseys there. Wolverines have to punt again. A slow developing play in that circumstance isn't going to work because Seneca Valley has such a size advantage that you start to pull the linemen and they just can clog that up and prevent anything positive from happening. Nice punt by Hanchett off of a good snap for a change and it will be returned by Seneca Valley from the 35-yard line. Nowhere to go for the return man once he gets to the 40 as the tackle is made by Taiwan Milton. As the tackle on Brennan Hayes, the return man for Seneca Valley. They'll say he actually gets out to the 41. Taiwan Milton doing a good job this year for the Wolverines on special teams, and he's had to step in on defense so far this year in several games, actually, and a junior, so I'm sure he will be playing himself into a starting role next year. And as you see, a very nice tackle, not letting... Hayes get any further on the return. Seneca Valley first and 10 at their own 41. 
Woodland Hills forced to punt on their last drive. Raiders with two receivers to this near side left, one the far boundary right. Hand off, the ball carrier Stanger will get to the line of scrimmage and he'll be wrestled down by Sidney Summers. Juan Howell's also in on the stop. Second and 10 for the Raiders. The ball remains in the middle of the field. And Seneca Valley will split one receiver to the far boundary right. Trips to the near side left. Sidecar to the left-hand side of Lawson is Stanger. And a flag before the snap. And a procedural penalty against the Raiders is going to back them up five yards. Wolverines have a nice chance here. Pushing the Raiders back. Now to not let them get anything on this now, which will be second and 15. And hopefully turn it into a third and long. Raiders had a third and long on the previous drive and were able to capitalize on a throw down the field to Stebbins. Now Stebbins got up, taunted a Wolverine. Um, Mike Roman, who made the tackle, that pushed Seneca Valley back, and the Raiders ended up having to punt once we transitioned into the second quarter. Rolling to the left, Lawson throwing down the field, has a receiver who got a step away from a defensive back, and making the catch is Josh McLean for Seneca Valley as the tackle is made by Jeffrey Williams. Yeah, Je uh, Jeffrey Williams just not turning around. If he would have been able to turn around, he might have been able to make an adjustment to make an interception or at least knock the ball away, but he doesn't turn around, and another big completion for Seneca Valley. So on second and long, the Raiders turn it into first and 10 at the Woodland Hills 25. Stanger, the ball carrier. Gets to the line of scrimmage. He's driven down by Michael Roman. And a quick whistle there. Roman had ripped the ball away. And Roman was off to the races. And he is not happy that a reasonably quick whistle ended that play prematurely. Very quick whistle. I mean, he wasn't even close to going down. Roman rips the ball away. And that's an extremely tough break for Woodland Hills because you see the strength of the defense pulling the ball away and possibly a little home cooking on that quick whistle. And we saw that a week ago, Roman, with the strength to rip a ball away from a Kiski Cavalier. He ended up coming out of there with the football ultimately on that play, and that's what helped lead to him to our state senator, Jake Costa, player of the game a week ago. Trips to the right, one receiver to the short side left. Lawson in the shotgun. He's going to run to his left-hand side. Now he cuts back to the right. Gets to the 20 and then tried to retreat to get away from Tavian Brooks, but Tavian Brooks says no way. And Lawson, who had picked up five, ends up retreating three yards, and it's ultimately a gain of just two, and it's third and eight. And that's one thing you're really going to have little success, if any, doing against the Wolverines is trying to cut back and make more yardage out of something. And he should have just taken what the Wolverines were giving him there. Now a third and decently long for Seneca Valley. Clock winding to seven and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. The Raiders on top of the Wolverines, 10 zip. Lawson running the option to the near side left. The pitch to Stanger, and he is met deep in the backfield by Christopher Jones, and then the second wave of Wolverines came in and cleaned that play up for a loss of two, and that brings up fourth down and 10. Great job by the Wolverines defense. They're really containing that play, not letting Stanger get anything. Is the Raiders try out the option, and I don't know if we'll be seeing much more of that tonight from Seneca Valley. This will be a 42-yard field goal attempt for Seth Winters, the ball on the left hash. Remember, the holder is Gabe Lawson, the quarterback for the Raiders. Good snap, and the kick is blocked by the Wolverines. It'll be cut out of the air by Jaden Lucas at the seven-yard line. He's running the far boundary. Now reverses his field, coming to the near side. Picks up a block or two as the flags come down. And now another flag comes in as Jaden Lucas has his cage grabbed by the tackler, Kevin Meter. So while there may have been an illegal block against Woodland Hills, looks like that's going to be offset by a face mask by Meter. Yeah, we'll see where they end up putting this ball. The official's going to have to talk this one out for a minute or two. Already talked about it. Woodland Hills back into conference next week. Two straight conference games, in fact, to wrap up the regular season for Woody High. As they travel to Moon to take on the Tigers next week and then wrap up the regular season at home. It'll be senior rec as they take on the Chartiers Valley Colts. Two big games for the Wolverines. Adam, if they want to make a last effort to get into the playoffs, they need to win those two games. They need some help along the way from other teams in the Allegheny 8 Conference to get in, but if they're able to win those two and things go right, they can just slip in. The official's still talking this over, so we'll see what the decision is momentarily. 
So we've got an illegal block in the back against Woodland Hills. And then a personal foul face mask against Seneca Valley. Those penalties will offset. And it'll be Woodland Hills football at the 18-yard line. So the blocked field goal. And Woodland Hills actually gets it at the 19. That's where they'll spot the ball. So some big defensive plays here after Woodland Hills had given up seven points early. They only got a field goal, did the Raiders, after taking the ball away from the Wolverines. And that drive started for Seneca Valley at the 30. And the Raiders a couple of times here have taken the ball into Woodland Hills territory, but came up empty. Key drive for the Wolverines. They're able to get down the field here and close to the end of the first half. William Clark dots the pistol. Judson hands off to Clark. He'll slide through some blockers, spinning his way out towards the 25-yard line. A gain of about six as he is wrestled down, down at the bottom of the pile, Jake Stebbins for Seneca Valley. Biggest run up the middle, I would think, of the night for the Wolverines right there by William Clark. Not much doing all night, but there was some success there for the Wolverines. A nice chunk of yardage up to the 25. Clock winding towards six minutes to play here in the second quarter. Woodland Hills trails Seneca Valley 10-0. Ball favoring the right hash. Willow Hills with a bunch to the left. One receiver to the short side right. Judson in the shotgun. Steps to his left, settles and throws. Tried to find Lucas over there on that far sideline and the pass too strong for him. There were two receivers who had to step on defenders over there. Rawlings was one, Lucas was the other. Judson couldn't find either. Yeah, it didn't look like he was able to quite set his feet and make the most accurate throw. Forced him to kind of throw on a little unbalanced. A little high from Judson. That's something we've seen so far this year. Decent bit from Judson is the overthrow. Yeah, it seemed like he got a little happy feet as the Raiders were coming in. He had that opportunity to settle and throw before the pressure got there, but the pressure was enough to at least throw off his concentration. Twins to the short side right, one receiver to the far side left. Hand off Clark. Clark, loss of two on third down and four. And that brings up fourth down and about a half a dozen. Yeah, I'm not quite sure I agree with that play call there to try and run up the middle. You didn't need a monster amount of yardage, but you needed enough that I think the pass would have been the way to go. Wolverines haven't tried anything over the middle tonight, and you know, see if they can maybe try that out later in the game. Clock winding down towards five minutes and 15 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Fourth and six for Woody High with the ball at the 23. Chucky Hanchett on to punt it away for Woodland Hills. Low snap. Hanchett eight, gathers it, spiraling punt, takes a bounce in favor of Woodland Hills, will continue to roll in favor of the Wolverines, and it'll be downed by Jaden Edmonds inside of Seneca Valley, t Valley territory at the 43. Another big opportunity for the Woodland Hills defense, stepping up a few times, forcing a punt, blocking a field goal to the special teams, and now they really have to stop Seneca Valley because you do not want to go down 17-0 headed into the locker room against a very good team. And Earlier in the year when they played North Allegheny, a 10-6 halftime score was how it ended as they fell to North Allegheny, but they played those top teams very tough, and they got a, another tough one next week against the Pine Ridge and Rams. Every punt for Woodland Hills today has ended in a punt except for one, and that was the first drive of the game for Woody High, and they turned the ball over, an interception thrown by Judson. Lawson will step under center for a rare time today. They'll center into an eye backfield, and the... Ball carrier Stanger out of the backfield, drives his way into Raiders territory. Flag way in the backfield, and I think Michael Roman was manhandled and held, and that's going to back the Raiders up 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and the spot of the foul is at the 40-yard line, so it starts out as a loss of four, and you tack 10 more on that, and that'll bring up first down and 24. Yeah, just not very well disciplined there for the Raiders. Didn't even look like he needed to do that. But Michael Roman is quite dangerous, so you never know when he's going to slip through and make a big play. But still an unnecessary play by the Raiders, and it hurts their offense. They're going to be backed up majorly here. It'll be first and 24 for Seneca Valley with the ball at their own 30. The line to gain is the Woodland Hills 46-yard line. Lock winding. Just over four and a half minutes to play here in the second quarter. Woodland Hills down 10-0. One receiver to the far boundary right, one to the short side left. One back set, play action, Lawson throws, the pass is complete in the flat, banged around and finally down to the turf goes the receiver, Josh McLean. McLean was initially met at around the 35 yard line, but instead of a gain of only five, he picks up four more yards for a gain of nine and it's now second down and 15 with the ball at the Seneca Valley 39. 
you know, something little like that you think might not mean a lot after a first and 24, but able to slip through and get those extra couple yards, that could be big for Seneca Valley as Wolverines did not finish their tackles there. Yeah, Michael Roman just with a shoulder shiver instead of wrapping up the ball carrier. Trips left, one receiver to the short side right. Lawson rolling to his left-hand side. Throws and the pass is intercepted. It's William Clark with the INT. Inside of the 30, inside of the 25 to the 20. Cuts around a Raider inside of the 10 to the 5. Still spinning all the way down to the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Woodland Hills. Huge play for the Wolverines. Exactly what they had to do. Unable to get into the end zone, but hey, they'll take it as they drive it all the way inside the 5. William Clark with a great cutback, and that's the advantage of having a running back in your secondary. If he can get, a, if he can get an interception like that, he is very dangerous after the catch. Jake Stebbins was the intended receiver, but the pass was overthrown by Lawson, and settling behind Stebbins was William Clark to take that ball down to the Seneca Valley 1, where it'll be first and 10 for Woodland Hills. Or first and goal, rather, for Woodland Hills at the 1. Let's see if, what the Wolverines look to do here. I would think they're going to try and plunge it, but that is a, not an easy thing to do against this stout front for the Raiders. Woodland Hills in the pistol. Clark behind Judson. Grabbing left is Rawlings. Pitch, Clark cuts it back, lowers the shoulder, gets to the line of scrimmage before he's forced down. They'll say he got inside of the one, at least by the spot on the official on the far sideline. So a gain of uh, minimal yardage and uh, minimal inches, I should say, not even yardage. And it's second down and less than one inside of the one. Kind of Wanted to see, maybe on first down, see if Judson would take that sneak. He's like, he's got a big body, he's a big quarterback. If you're gonna, if you're gonna try that, you might as well try a sneak because you're so close. Again, the pistol. And the left guard moved early. Sidney Summers, or rather Caleb Brevard, Sidney's half-brother, sagged back in his stance, and that's gonna cost Woodland Hills five yards. And we saw Seneca Valley have the ball second and goal at the Woodland Hills three. Two procedural penalties took four points off of the board when Seneca Valley ended up having to kick a field goal. Let's hope that isn't a similar circumstance here for Woodland Hills as they now face second and goal at the six instead of second and goal at the one. It's not what you want to do against a very good defense. That one yard now becoming six yards, that much more difficult to get it into the end zone. Roman grabs from left to right. High snap gathered in by Judson. Clark, the ball carrier, getting down inside of the five. He'll be brought down around the three-yard line. And it'll be third and goal at the three. So a pickup of three there for Clark. That's the good news. The bad news is Woodland Hills still three yards away from pay dirt here. Clock winding under two minutes and 40 seconds to play in quarter number two. Yeah, this is a very key moment for the Wolverines. And hopefully they can get some kind of points out of this regardless. But you really, really want to get into the end zone and build some momentum going into the locker room. Third and goal for Woodland Hills at the Raiders three. High backfield behind Judson. Jones the fullback, tailback. Clark slides to his right, gets to the one. So it'll be fourth and goal at the one. Looks like they're gonna keep the offense on the field. I, I like to gamble, but this is a tough one here. And now it looks like they're gonna go to the field goal unit, yeah. It's, you wanna get points, but at the same time, you're at the one yard line, you're so close. It's a tough call, but they're going to try and kick it, and hopefully all this, the snapping issues have been resolved, and Hanch is able to put this one through for the Wolverines. Roman is the snapper. Lucas is the holder. Hanch the kicker. This will be an 18-yard field goal attempt near the right hash. Good snap by Roman, and the field goal is up, and it's no good. Wide left. And now the and ball. And a flag came in late. This may be roughing the holder. We'll see what the Wolverines get here. and They're going to head off the field, and the offense is coming back, so I think we're under the assumption that it definitely is on Seneca Valley. Roughing, or it's running into the kicker. So replay fourth down. And so now it looks like Coach Boster will, will go for it. I think after that, you have to. And that's running into the kicker every day of the week and twice on Sundays. I mean, the Raiders fans don't like it on the near sideline, but as we took a look at our triangle bar and grill replay, undoubtedly, that's what that was. So Woodland Hills will replay fourth down, fourth and goal inside of the one. Under 90 seconds to play here in the second quarter. 
Woodland Hills with the football at the Seneca Valley 1. This could be a make or break moment in the game for the Wolverines, Adam. They gotta, gotta push this in. High backfield behind Gavin Judson. Double tight end set, Roman the tight end to the right. Rawlings to the left. Judson under center. Hands off, Meredith hesitates. Gets to the line of scrimmage, he can't get in. Yeah, you know, Adam, I, I really don't know why you don't do the sneak there. It, you, you have you, or you have Josh Rawlings, a huge receiver. You have so many options. The, the up, up the middle was not working at all, and I, I'm just not sure what the logic was behind that. I saw the nose guard surge towards the neutral zone there. Now, unfortunately, that wasn't called against Seneca Valley, but regardless, Woodland Hills wasn't able to come out of there with any points after the interception by William Clark took the ball down to the one. Woodland Hills with five opportunities to punch it in. But it was thwarted by a penalty, a missed field goal, and then a big stop by the Raiders inside of the one. And a timeout on the field, and we'll step away too. 119 to play here in the second quarter. Seneca Valley leads, Seneca Valley leads Woodland Hills 10 to nothing. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Bush Brothers Car Care Center in Swissvale has been a Monongahela Avenue institution for over 30 years. Bush Brothers is a full-service mechanic and tire shop for all types of vehicles. Whether you need mechanical work, an alignment, state inspection and emissions testing, new tires, or just an oil change, Bush Brothers is the place for you. Bush Brothers Car Care Center, Monongahela Avenue in Swissvale, or give Martin and Jason a call at 412-351-5342. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Woodland Hills, after an interception by William Clark, gets the ball inside of the Seneca Valley one-yard line. But the Raiders, defense stout, took Woodland Hills four opportunities to try to score, and they couldn't. 119 to play here in the second quarter. The Raiders with the ball inside of their own one, and they'll just try to get it out of the shadow of their own goal line. Running up the gut, go the Raiders out towards the five-yard line. That'll give them some breathing room as the clock will wind towards a minute to play. you got to have a short memory there. you got to forget about that going into the locker room, Adam, because that's just something that's it's inexcusable. You have to get in there, but now you didn't. you got to face the music, and you got to get past it. you got to come out of the second for the second half stronger. And we were talking off the air, maybe not Judson up the middle, but maybe a quick hitter to Christopher Jones. He's strong, and it's a fast play. Yeah, that was, that was a good point by you, Adam. It's fast. That's the key. Those other plays, too slow developing. It gave the defensive line for Seneca Valley time to get through and make the stops. Hand off. Nowhere to go for the tailback Stanger as he is wrapped and brought down inside of the five. Down at the bottom of the pile for Woodland Hills. Woodland Appeared Hills. to be Angelo Hodge. And Woodland Hills takes a timeout. That'll give us a time to take a breather, too. Just under 30 seconds to play. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd district since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 412-241-6690 or log on to SenatorCosta.com. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Seneca Valley with the football. Third down and six with the ball at the five. 26 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Woodland Hills used a timeout there. They have two remaining, and I think that was in an effort maybe if they get the ball back, at least give them an opportunity to try to score in the waning seconds of this second quarter. You just got to be careful here and make sure they don't do anything crazy. But looks like Lawson might pooch this one right now. And flags before the snap. And this is going to back Flag. Seneca Valley halfway Flag. back to the goal line. So instead of the five, it'll be around the two and a half. Procedure penalty against Makes it that much more difficult for them. 
It looked like he was a little too far back for a shotgun, or maybe they're just trying to give him a little bit more room here on a pass. I wasn't sure if they were just going to try and pooch it and get out of here right now or, or what. Yeah, the whole left side of the offensive line moved before the center snapped the ball. And that cost Seneca Valley two and a half yards. And it's now third down and about eight with the ball. Just past the two. Lawson running to his right-hand side. He'll be wrapped and brought down. Timeout called by the Woodland Hills coaching staff on the far sideline. Coach Tim called timeout immediately when that play ended. And that'll bring up fourth down for Seneca Valley when we return. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders. 10-0 Seneca Valley on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trip Live High School Sports Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale is a proud sponsor of the Wolverines and has been serving the Woodland Hills community for nearly three quarters of a century. The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swissvale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're going to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. So fourth down for Seneca Valley, fourth and nine for the Raiders. Lawson will punt, standing at his own end line. Jaden Lucas, the dangerous return man for Woodland Hills, stands at his own 40. A punt to the far boundary will bounce to the far sideline and out of bounds. And fortunately for Woodland Hills, that rolled to that far sideline reasonably quickly to end the play. Yeah, they have a little bit of time left here, Adam, but I'm not quite sure why Jaden Lucas was so deep there. If, he, if you move him up about 10 yards, he may have been able to take that on the run and take it to the house. That's something where I'm not sure why he was so deep and a coach didn't notice that and bring him up a little bit. Well, it's a circumstance there where, you know, you're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't because if the punt carries over the head, clock winds. In a circumstance there, the best option happened because the ball bounced and went out of bounds. We'll see if the Wolverines can put together any magic here in this last 13 seconds. They still do have one timeout. Possibly see if they can go to Josh Rawlings. I'm not sure if he's even on the field, though, right now. Judson, shotgun, looking left, throwing left. Has a receiver down that far sideline. It's caught for a Woodland Hills touchdown into the end zone. Michael Coleman, the first time we say his name today, and it's a Woody High TD. Oh, and it was a great, great pass and a great play by the Wolverines. And if you're the Raiders, I don't know how you don't see that coming. It's something that the Wolverines have done a few times this year. They've probably seen that on film, but he beats Christo back, who actually looked like he may have had pass interference on a little hold of, on Coleman. But Coleman's able to break away and really track that ball well and take it into the end zone. Some redemption for the Wolverines. Great throw by Judson, similar to the touchdown pass we saw a week ago. Chucky Hanschett with an important PAT here out of the hold of Lucas. Kick up, and that kick finds its way in between the uprights and good. And seven seconds remain here in quarter number two. Woodland Hills Trail, Seneca Valley, 10-7. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Woodland Hills football is brought to you in part by the law offices of Owen Seaman. Owen is a Woodland Hills alumnus who studied law at Duquesne University and has been practicing law in the Pittsburgh area for over 15 years. Attorney Owen Seaman's experience encompasses virtually every facet of criminal defense. If you find yourself in need of criminal defense representation, call Owen at 412-721-0412 or visit owenthelawyer.com. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. 28-yard touchdown pass as Gavin Judson finds Michael Coleman down the far sideline, and Woodland Hills cuts into the Seneca Valley lead. It's Seneca Valley 10, Woodland Hills 7. With time waning here in quarter number two, just seven seconds to play in the second quarter. Making something hard look so easy, Adam, to the Wolverines. It's something so easy at the, at the one-yard line. Make, look, they make it look so hard. But, hey, they get seven points on the board, and hopefully they can get into the locker room 10-7. Hanchett, the kickoff, bounces, and will be returned from around the 24-yard line by Josh McLean. And McLean out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Tackle made at the 43 by Caleb Williams. Number five, Josh McLean on the return. 
two seconds. You know, Adam, I wouldn't be surprised if you could, we see this double reverse pass or something they tried against North Allegheny, and uh, Joey Porter Jr. made a big interception for North Allegheny in that game on that play. But with two seconds, they might say, heck, heck you know, what, what, why not, you know? Give something like that a try against this Wolverines defense. Hopefully they stay disciplined and sound to the Wolverines, and if that happens, they can stop it. Looks like they might kneel it, though. We'll see. No, they're not in that. Yeah, Lawson formation. will step under center. He'll take a step back and take the knee, and that'll do it for the first half. We go to halftime, Woodland Hills trailing Seneca Valley 10 to seven, and Woodland Hills has got to feel real good about themselves, especially the way they're playing defense, and number two, the fact that they were able to score that late touchdown. Certainly, Adam, that was huge to get into the end zone there after not being able to get in after several attempts from the one yard line. They get that touchdown with 13 seconds. Judson to Coleman, strong into the locker room. We're going to step away for about 30 seconds. When we return, our halftime coverage starts. Again, your halftime score, 10 to 7, Seneca Valley on top of Woodland Hills. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Wolverine Football is also brought to you by the Triangle Barn Grill, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home, LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center, the Law Offices of Owen Seaman, Bush Brothers Car Care, The Barber's Inn in Swissville, LG3 Entertainment, Web Landings, ABOS Opticians, Matthews Auto Service, and the Zubin Dental Associates. Now it's time for the Woodland Hills Football Network Halftime Show. It's halftime and Woodland Hills trails Seneca Valley 10 to seven at the mid-game mark. Adam Gusky, Eric Shuley on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Uh, Seneca Valley started the game with the ball and they drove down the field on the Wolverines and they capped the drive off with a 36 yard screen pass from Lawson to Stanger and that put Seneca Valley up on top seven to nothing early. On the Wolverines first drive of the game, they drove the ball out to the midfield stripe. It was then turned over as the interception was thrown by Gavin Judson. Seneca Valley took the ball deep into Woodland Hills territory. However, a couple of false starts against Seneca Valley drove them back to the 13 and the Raiders had to settle for a field goal. And then the de defense really picked up for both teams. Woodland Hills bent a couple of times but never broke, forcing a couple of punts. And ultimately, Woodland Hills got the ball down to the Seneca Valley one-yard line on an interception by William Clark. Woodland Hills with four opportunities to try to punch it in uh, down inside of that 10-yard line. Uh, on first down, Clark had nowhere to go. On second down, that was a five-yard loss on a, a penalty. A couple of yards picked up by Clark, brought it up to third down and goal at the three. On third and goal, nowhere to go for Woodland Hills. That brought up fourth and goal after they got the ball on that third down play down to the one. Now, a field goal initially was no good by Chucky Hanchett, but the Raiders ran into the kicker and the Wolverines brought the offense out again. The Wolverines not able to punch it in on that fourth and goal inside of the one. However, a couple of plays later, Seneca Valley wasn't able to do anything with the football. They punted it away. A punt went out of bounds. Willen Hill started the ball at their own 28 yard, or rather at the Seneca Valley 28 yard line, Eric. And after the first play, after that punt, it was a touchdown pass from Gavin Judson to Michael Coleman to put Woodland Hills on the board and it's 10 to seven your halftime score. Yeah, in a weird way, Adam, that actually kind of worked out better for the Wolverines. They were able to keep the ball out of Seneca Valley's hands after those attempts at the one yard line. Then when it finally got to Seneca Valley, their play selection had to change a little bit because they were backed up so much. Wolverines defense tough against that run, stopped them. And as you mentioned, got the ball back and a great strike from Judson to Coleman. A great connection that we've seen a few times this year. Works to perfection for the Wolverines. They get on the board, make it a three point game going into the line. If you're watching or listening live, enjoy the two marching bands. If you're watching our replay, we'll be back with second half coverage. Again, your halftime score is Seneca Valley leading Woodland Hills 10 to 7 at halftime. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Halftime in Harmony, Pennsylvania. Adam Gusky, Eric Shuley on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Woodland Hills trailing Seneca Valley 10 to 7 at halftime. And we thank you for joining us no matter where you are across the Woodland Hills Football Network. Woodland Hills 
faced some adversity in half number one. But they've got to be happy with the way they went into the locker room, scoring last and keeping Seneca Valley at bay for the most part. Certainly, Adam, that was a big touchdown to get at the end just when you're totally discouraged because you could not get into the end zone there for the Wolverines. They come back, big strike from Judson to Coleman and make this a big, big close ball game at the half. We're going to step away for a couple of minutes, and when we return, we'll get you set for the second half. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. ABOS Opticians on Braddock Avenue in Braddock is your one-stop optical shop. With hundreds of the latest frame styles and lenses, the skilled opticians at ABOS will help select and fit the best eyewear option for you. Plus, ABOS Opticians is the best eyewear repair facility in the area. No matter what your eyewear needs are, make ABOS Opticians your opticians. Call ABOS Opticians at 412-271-4424 or visit abossopticians.com. Don and John at Matthews Auto Service have been serving the Turtle Creek Valley for over 40 years. In addition to being a full-service gas station, Matthews offers oil changes, state inspection and emissions testing, new tires, and light mechanical work. Matthews Auto Service, Monroeville Avenue in Turtle Creek, or call them at 412-824-0940. Thanks for tuning in to the Halftime Show on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Woodland Hills Football is presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Wolverine Football is also brought to you by the Triangle Barn Grill, Patrick D. Lanigan Funeral Home, LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center, the Law Offices of Owen Seaman, Bush Brothers Car Care, the Barbers Inn in Swissvale, LG3 Entertainment, Web Landings, ABOS Opticians, Matthews Auto Service, and the Zubin Dental Associates. Now it's time for the second half. Second half starting shortly here in Harmony, Pennsylvania. Adam Gusky, Eric Shuley on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. And really, Eric, we, we can't overstate how happy Woodland Hills has to be going into the locker room, down by just three points, and receiving the football to start the second half. Definitely. they got to let that carry over into the second half. They're going to get the ball first. You got to put together a nice big drive that kind of can discourage Seneca Valley, maybe get them on their heels for the first time in this game other than right at the end of the half. We're going to take one final break here in the halftime show. When we return, it'll be the start of the second half. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Woodland Hills football is brought to you in part by the law offices of Owen Seaman. Owen is a Woodland Hills alumnus who studied law at Duquesne University and has been practicing law in the Pittsburgh area for over 15 years. Attorney Owen Seaman's experience encompasses virtually every facet of criminal defense. If you find yourself in need of criminal defense representation, call Owen at 412-721-0412 or visit owenthelawyer.com. Back in Harmony, PA, where Woodland Hills trails Seneca Valley 10-7 as we're seconds away from starting the second half. And again, Woodland Hills will receive to begin the second half. Seneca Valley halftime stats brought to you by Cranberry. Woodland Center Hills Center. started Don't the game, game on the second Cranberry drive of the game Cranberry with the football and threw an interception. Goal Gavin Judson threw seven, seven, an two, interception four, eight, that four, ended up leading to Seneca Valley's second score of the game, eight, just three eight, points eight, after eight, the Raiders eight, scored eight, on a 36-yard touchdown eight, pass to start the game, Eric. But Woodland Hills had Seneca, held Seneca Valley scoreless after that 22-yard field goal. And the Wolverines blocked the field goal, took the ball away, and ended up scoring on the final offensive play of the second half on a touchdown pass of 28 yards from Gavin Judson to Michael Coleman. Yeah, the Woodland Hills defense has played pretty strong. They've let up some big plays by the Raiders, but ultimately only giving up 10 points through the first half. you got to be happy. To the winning ticket, zero. Winters will kick off for Seneca Five, Valley. Nine, seven, and the Wolverines seven, have three receivers back deep to return. It'll be 
Meredith from around the seven yard line. He finds a crease around the 20, steps out across the 25, approaching the 30 before a gang of black jerseys bring him down. And Woodland Hills will start their first drive of the second half at their own 29. Yeah, the Raiders tighten up there on special teams, not giving Meredith nearly as much as he got on his other return earlier in the game for the Wolverines. Rodney Stubbs, who has seen action in the past several games at quarterback, hasn't come into the game yet. Gavin Johnson has quarterbacked every drive today for Woodland Hills, even the drive after he threw the interception that led to the Seneca Valley field goal we talked about a moment ago. And Woodland Hills comes out of the locker room and has to use one of their very important second-half timeouts. But that will give us an opportunity to hear from our signature sponsor, State Senator Jay Costa. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd District since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 412-241-6690 or log on to... Seven seconds elapsed here in the third quarter as Woodland Hills runs the jet sweep on the first offensive play of the third quarter. After using a timeout before the first offensive play, they send Jay Smith in motion from left to right, and Jay Smith's going to pick up about eight yards, and it's second down and two for Woodland Hills with the ball across the Seneca Valley 35 to the, or rather across the Woodland Hills 35 to the 37. This is the time when you really want to see the Wolverines have some jump in their steps, some confidence, really attack this Raiders defense. Two receivers left, one to the far boundary right. Hand off to the lone setback. Nowhere to go for William Clark as he'll get to the line of scrimmage no further. The same thing Adam last in the first half, ran that jet sweep to Jay Smith to get about eight yards, and they did the same thing they did last time, which resulted in no yards last time. Same thing this time. So it's third and two for Woodland Hills with the ball at their own 37-yard line. Woodland Hills short a timeout for the remainder of the second half after using a timeout prior to the first offensive play of the third quarter. Clock winding 10.45 here in the third frame. Woodland Hills down by three. Bunch to the left as Judson in the shotgun. Looks left, now looks across the middle in the pass. In and out of the hands of the receiver, Jaden Lucas. He had it right in his midst and just couldn't hang on. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that, Adam. He had Jaden Lucas right over the middle on a little crossing pattern. He had so much room to run, and maybe that's what he was thinking the run after the catch, and he didn't look the ball in, and unable to bring it in. The Wolverines have to punt here. We have not seen a protracted drive today for Woodland Hills. The Wolverines have been able to crack the scoreboard on a one-play, 28-yard touchdown drive. Bouncing snap gathered in by Hanchett, and he'll boot it away. It'll carry back to the 25-yard line where there's some room for the return man for Seneca Valley. Brennan Hayes, and Hayes is forced out of bounds on the near sideline around the 43-yard line, and flags on the play as well. Definitely, I think, going to be a block in the back. Adam looked like very big block in the back by the Raiders there. Good thing that the refs did a good job of catching that one. Should move the Raiders back. Not give them as good a field position as we thought they were going to have. So it is officially an illegal block in the back against Seneca Valley. It'll be from the 38. Great job back there to by the 27. Chuck. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that again. Great job by Chucky Hanchett, and we have to mention he, that was a rolling snap. Never really was in, in the air at all. Rolled all the way back to him. Took a good roll, <laughs> and Hanchett was able to pick that up and First get off a nice punt. Defense hopefully can pick up where they left off. The motion to an eye backfield behind Lawson. The ball carrier is Matt Stanger, and Stanger's going to drive his way out to the 37-yard line for a gain of about 10. Lots of running room there for Stanger as he hit that hole quick. And this is beginning just like the first drive of the game. 
again for the Raiders. Hopefully it doesn't end the same way as it ended for, for the Raiders. Hopefully the Wolverines are able to put a stop to it quick. One back set behind Lawson. He'll send a wing in motion who crabs left then right. Ball carrier Stanger running to his right hand side and he is wrapped and brought down by Anthony Meredith. Shy of the 40, 35 rather at the 34 yard line so it's a loss of three. Bringing up second down and 13. Great job by Taylor Brooks breaking off a block there and Anthony Meredith of course really shooting up the hole and making a great play there to take Stanger down. And now you got him backed up in a second and long and you got a big chance here. If they're going to go to the pass, you could really get a nice sack here. Second and 13. The ball at the 34-yard line. Shotgun. Lawson straight drop back. Has time. Now pressured late. Throws across the middle, and the pass is caught. On the reception is Josh McLean. Josh McLean draggling a Wolverine all the way down to the 30-yard line. William Clark will be credited with the tackle, but not before Seneca Valley picks up big yardage after being pushed back on first down. You know, that's that's tough, Adam. You, again, the Wolverines drop eight into coverage there. They only send three men, and you have eight guys in coverage, and you let a big pass like that up. That's just inexcusable for the defense and the Wolverines. You cannot let that happen right over the middle of the field. Jay Lucas over-pursued there and missed a tackle, and just not good at all for the Wolverines. High backfield. Hand off to Stanger. Stanger has room over to the right-hand side. He'll be wrestled out of bounds inside of the 10 at the five-yard line. And after Woodland Hills goes three and out on their first drive, Seneca Valley threatening first and goal at the five. They just have not come out of the locker room the way you want them to come out. As you mentioned, Adam, they go three and out, some questionable play calling, and, and then they just the defense falling apart here on this drive and giving Seneca Valley a chance to go up by 10 again. Seneca Valley going to take some time in the huddle here to talk about this first and goal play at the five-yard line. Raiders looking to build on a three-point lead. Power eye backfield behind Lawson. Lawson going to run to his right behind two blockers, and Lawson's going to get down inside of the one, brought down just shy of the goal line. Yeah, trusting the big boys up front of the Raiders, and why not when you got all that size and experience on that line as they get extremely close to getting into the end zone there. Lawson just inches shy. And I have a feeling I know what they're going to do here. Yeah, power eye again. Lawson running to his right. Touchdown. Gets into the end zone. He was stymied at first, and then a second shove got him into the end zone. And Woodland Hills' deficit is at nine points. And it's a shame, Adam. You, you get the ball coming out of the locker room. You have a chance to control the beginning of the third quarter and the Wolverines just can't do it as you know that third down pass dropped by Jaden Lucas and they were unable to convert and then the defense letting up a huge pass play there on that second down and the rest was history for the Raiders and getting in the end zone and about to go up by 10. Into point after number 29. Similar circumstance to the first drive of the game for Seneca Valley they drove it right down on the Wolverines and scored and they do the same here on the first drive of the second half. Good. And Seneca Valley leads Seven Woodland Hills by 10 again, 17 to 7 with 8.08 to play in quarter number three. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale is a proud sponsor of the Wolverines and has been serving the Woodland Hills community for nearly three quarters of a century. The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swissvale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're going to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. 8 8 to play in quarter number three. Woodland Hills trailing Seneca Valley 17-7. Adam Gus Garrick, truly on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. The halftime score was Seneca Valley 10, Woodland Hills 7. Wolverines took momentum into the locker room, but that went away quickly as the Wolverines went three and out on their first drive, and the Raiders turned their first drive into a Seneca Valley touchdown. 
Yeah, it was a good first down play for the Wolverines, but then they just could not get that extra two yards there and had to punt the ball away, and Raiders take it down and score. Kick to the one-yard line where William Clark is on the return for Woody High across the 20 to the 25, still on his feet out towards the 30, sliding through tacklers, now dragging black jerseys with him out towards the 32. And finally, he will be brought down to the turf. A gang of Raiders there, including Jake Good, leading the charge. Yeah, Clark does not go down easy. He is like Meredith in that he welcomes contact. And Raiders eventually were able to get him down. And luckily, Clark was able to hold on to that ball well, not let it get stripped away from him. And now another key drive for the Wolverines. you gotta got to convert here if you want to stay in this game. One receiver to the far boundary right. Twins to the near side left. Pistol formation. Judson's going to hand off. It's Meredith, the ball carrier. He'll get to the 30 for a one-yard loss and has nowhere else to go. And that play not working much all night and still trying to go back to it, but not, you're not seeing much of any success on that run. Yeah, the Wolverines keep going to the well up the gut, and there's no, a whole lot of room up the middle as the Raiders have big guys up the middle, and that time it was Drew Robertson who made the stop, 6'2", 285 senior. Huge height advantage on the near side here, Adam. It's unbelievable Josh Rawlings has almost a whole foot on his man. Pass to the near side will go to Lucas instead as Lucas is wrapped and brought down for a gain of two from the 30 out to the 32-yard line. It's unfortunate the Wolverines don't, don't see that and are not able to call an audible or something because you got Brendan Hayes about 5'7 on Josh Rawlings, about 6'5", 6'6". Definitely want to utilize that if, 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 it, if it occurs. Connor Hayes parenthetically made the tackle on that previous play for Seneca Valley. Now it's Woodland Hills with the ball, third and nine at the 32. Twins to either side, ball on the left hash. Judson rolling to his right hand side. Steps forward, settles, throws, and the pass looking for Lucas. And there's contact before that ball got there. And I don't know how that's not interference. I think Lucas catches the ball, there's not interference. If he doesn't, I don't see how there's not a flag on defensive black Josh McLean. He was there a step and a half before the football got there. McLean basically tackled him. I don't understand how you do not throw a flag on that. That was textbook pass interference there on the Raiders. A nice pass by Judson, but Lucas had absolutely no opportunity to make that catch as he got drilled from behind. And then the taunt also by McLean, and I, I, I just don't know how that isn't called. I, I don't mind the taunt not being called. At a certain point, it's football. Chucky Hancha just gets the punt away, and it will be fair caught by Seneca Valley at the 37-yard line. It will be first and 10 for the Raiders, the fair catch by Brennan Hayes. I guess the only reason I was so upset about the Ton Adams because you're not you don't call the pass interference. You have a chance to make up for it. But no call. Wolverines have to gather themselves here and get a key stop, and they cannot let the Raiders go through them again here. Raiders have the ball, their second drive of the second half at their own 37-yard line, the ball on the right hash. Seneca Valley going to send multiple receivers to the wide side left. One receiver to the near short side right. He'll settle as a tight end. Will Jake Stebbins, high backfield, behind Lawson. Hand off to Stanger. Stanger, not much room as he'll be wrestled down. A pair of Wolverines in on the stop. Angelo Hodge leads the charge. And it'll be a pickup of two, and it's second and eight for the Raiders. Lots of strength shown there by Angelo Hodge as he does not let Stanger break away from him. Nice job by the Wolverines' defense. Second and two for Seneca Valley. The ball remains on the right hash. They'll split trips to the left of the formation. One receiver to the short side right. Gabe Lawson in the shotgun. Matt Stanger, the sidecar to his left. Play action. Throw by Lawson across the middle, and the pass is caught by Jake Stebbins, and Stebbins is brought down right at the first down flag. A pickup of eight, and it's first and ten for Seneca Valley at the 38, or 48, rather. Nice play by the Raiders there. I, I think it was a very generous spot. I do not think he got that first down, but they gave him enough, and the Raiders keep moving the ball. 
taking a look at where that ball went down. It seems like it was right about where that ball is spotted as we speak. So not the worst call, but the knee did come down maybe before the ball carrier went forward. So maybe it is about a half yard shy. Regardless, it's first and 10 for the Raiders. The ball carrier is Stanger. And Stanger has a crease and he has near first down yardage. They'll give him enough for the first down as he takes it inside of the Woodland Hills 42. Defense has to get, get get together here and make a stop. They're letting this game slip away if they have any chance. And they, you just do not see any confidence right now from the Wolverines defense. Wing to the right, two receivers to the far boundary left. Now the Raiders motion into an offset eye backfield. Stanger the ball carrier, shoves his way into the line of scrimmage, surging inside of the 40 to the 38 yard line. Tackle on the play by Taylor Brooks. Really need to get a stop here into the Wolverines. Figure something out, and I think the Raiders are going to mostly keep it on the ground. They've had a lot of success on the ground. They certainly like to mix it up. When you got a nice 10-point lead with the clock rolling, getting down to the end of the third quarter here, you don't want to take any major chances, but he's in an empty set right now. Lawson all by himself. Two receivers to either side. He has all day to throw the football, throws it across the middle, finding a soft spot in the zone is Jake Stebbins, and he is brought down at the 16-yard line. And it's first and 10 for Seneca Valley inside of the Woodland Hills red zone. Just way, way too much open field there for the Raiders. Again, Wolverines aren't blitzing much, and it doesn't matter, even though they have guys back in coverage. There are just too many holes right now in that secondary, and a beautiful pass from Lawson there to connect with Stebbins. Big time receiver for the Raiders. Moves him into the red zone. One back set, delay handoff, Stanger met in the backfield, slides through the first tackle, but he won't get past Anthony Meredith, and it'll be a loss of about two yards. Back to the 18. Instead of first and 10 at the 16, it's now second and a dozen from the 18. Good job by the Wolverines there, controlling the run by Stanger. But that's only first down, and they got to get a stop. Do not let the Raiders get on the board again. If they do, it's got to only be a field goal. Clock winding down towards three minutes to play here in the third quarter. Seneca Valley up on top of Woodland Hills by 10, 17 to 7. High backfield behind Lawson. Play action. Lawson pressured late. A Wolverine was wrestled to the turf, so this is a uh, free play for the Woodland Hills defense and a near interception by Jay Smith. But he can't come out of there with the football. But... The Raiders are going to be backed up 10 yards after the hold as the Woodland Hills defensive lineman was just tossed to the turf. So holding have, against the Raiders is going to cost them 10 from the spot. Would have been a big play there for the Wolverines, Adam, if they were able to make that interception. Unfortunately, they're unable to, and you see the holding there as DeJuan Howes just got ripped down in pursuit of quarterback Lawson. So that ball will be pushed back to the 31-yard line. So it's second down and 25 for Seneca Valley with the ball at the Woodland Hills 31. We've seen Seneca Valley come up with big plays on second and third and long situations. Raiders with two receivers to the near side right, one to the far boundary left. Shotgun for Lawson, sidecar to his right. Play action. Lawson just going to throw it down this near boundary. One-on-one -on -one coverage. The pass intended for Luke Smith is incomplete. And in his jersey was Jay Smith. So good coverage there and an incomplete pass. Smith on Smith there. Jay Smith wins that battle ball. Definitely a little bit overthrown. Would have been a very tough catch for Smith. Luke Smith, that is, to make. But nice coverage. Got him blanket coverage along the sideline there. No chance. Third and 25 for Seneca Valley. The line to gain is the six. The ball is at the 31. You got that big leg of Winters. You might want to look out for a run here if the Raiders want to see the spread defense of Woodland Hills. If it's a soft zone, they might want to take a chance at a run here, get some, pick up a nice chunk of yardage and give Winters a chance at a field goal. And that's exactly what they do is Lawson's going to keep it running to the left. Had a crease for a moment, but he's going to be strung out to the far sideline by Tavian Brooks. 
And a gain of just about four down to the 27-yard line. And the Raiders find themselves facing a fourth down and 21 with the ball at the 27. Interesting to see what the Raiders do here. Fourth down territory, but it is a long fourth down. Well, this is a similar circumstance that we saw in the first half where Seneca Valley was too far for a field goal, too close for a punt. Now, they're a little bit closer here, so I don't know that they're going to punt it. But if you turn it over on downs on this play, you give Woodland Hills reasonably decent field position at the 27. Though, granted, we haven't seen much from the Woodland Hills offense on sustained drives. Trips right, one receiver to the far boundary left. Shotgun and Lawson runs to his right-hand side. Throws to the near boundary, and the receiver, Luke Smith, not able to come out of there with that football. And the Seneca Valley fans and the coaching staff on the near sideline looking for a penalty. And now there's going to be a penalty instead against Seneca Valley's head coach because he was barking at the referee. Now I think it's going to be a sideline warning against the Raiders. But what Seneca Valley's fans and coaches wanted was a roughing the passer penalty against DeWan Howes. Now, I didn't see it. It was out of my uh, peripheral vision even. But it looked like Howes had thrown Lawson down, and according to the fans on the near side, he did so late. He came in and hit him late right as he let go of the ball. We've definitely seen roughing the passer called on a lot less. But in my opinion, right as the ball was let go, Howes was already making the hit as Lawson was making the throw, so he could not hold up. Well, let's see what we see here on the Triangle Barn Grill replay. Is yeah, It looked like Lawson, he wasn't hit by Howes. It was yeah, another it was, Wolverine, but it was right as the ball was released. It could have been Roman, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless, it, it was a, it was the timing was almost perfect when the Woodland Hills defender hit Lawson as he released the football. Two receivers split to either side, ball on the right hash. Woodland Hills has it after a Raiders turnover on downs. Jay Smith, the motion man from right to left. And I think Jay Smith took a forward step before coming to his left-hand side. And I think it was going to be a jet sweep in motion when Smith, but you can't take that forward step. Shoot themselves in the foot again. You do not want to make these, these <laughs> your, your conversions even longer. It's a struggle to get any yardage against this tough defense. You don't want to make it even more difficult for yourself by backing yourself up deep in your own territory. So Woodland Hills looking to take advantage of a Raiders turnover on downs. Smith motions from right to left. He'll settle the left of the formation. Pass to Smith to the near side from Judson. And Jay Smith's going to take it out towards the 25. It was going to be a gain of about three, but a flag came down. A Wolverine was clearly holding behind the play. Well, Seneca Valley kind of dodged the bullet after that previous turnover on downs. They official had the prerogative to either call a sideline warning against Seneca Valley or a, an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Seneca Valley bench. He decided to go for the former instead of the latter, so that bailed out the home team a little bit. But the Wolverines not doing themselves any favors afterwards as they are now backed up all the way to their own 12-yard line the line to gain is the 37, so it's first and 25. Judson rolls to his right, throws to his right, looking for Jay Smith. Jay Smith makes the catch, far boundary, across the 40, still on his feet, 45 to the 50, and he'll be forced out of bounds inside of Raiders territory at the 49. Just a great, great play by Jay Smith, and a great catch also by Smith, but there have been some whistles here. I don't see any, oh, there's a flag down. That's going to be pass interference, like pass interference yeah. on the Raiders. Yeah, it looked like, looked like it was pass interference indeed, but it doesn't hurt them as Jay Smith, as athletic as he is, still able to make the catch and get a big play for the Wolverines, exactly what they needed here as we go down to about two minutes left in the third. 2-0-3 here in the third frame. Woodland Hills down 10, but they have the ball inside of Raiders territory. There's a stoppage on the field as there's uh, an Official issue foul. with the chains on the far boundary. Play clock resets, and that gives Woodland Hills a fresh 25 seconds to work with. Twins to the short side right, one, to the receive, one receiver to the wide side left. Judson motions, Smith takes the jet sweep, cuts it upfield. 
And he'll get to the line of scrimmage, maybe pick up a yard to the 48, but no further. Stevens with a nice job of keeping Smith at bay. And going back to Jay Smith, dangerous weapon for the Wolverines and Raiders. Saw that one coming, able to read that play well and take down the Wolverines for only about a gain of one. So second and nine for Woody High with the ball inside of the Seneca Valley 49 approaching the 48. Woodland Hills will send a bunch to the short side left and one receiver to the far boundary right. Judson's in the shotgun. Clark, his sidecar to the left. Judson looking right the whole way, has a receiver open on that far boundary and it is caught by Michael Coleman. And Michael Coleman looked like he caught that ball at around the 39 and then was pushed back to about the 41, but they will not give him any forward progress there. And it'll be a gain of about seven to the 41 yard line, bringing up third down and two. Absolutely, Adam. He definitely caught that ball at the 39, maybe even the 38. And the referee gives him no benefit of forward progress. And, and that's going to really cost Wolverines now in a third and two. That wasn't a circumstance where the offensive player retreated. He was forced back, meaning that his forward progress had taken him to the 39, and the defender pushed him back. Two receivers left, two to the far boundary right. Judson in the sh shotgun, make it a pistol. He'll dump it off. Clark to the near side left. He'll slide through one tackler. Can't get past the second wave of black jerseys. It'll be a loss of two to the 43-yard line, and that brings up fourth down and four. And the Wolverines unable to convert there, and big, big break for the Raiders as they get a huge call there in terms of the, the placement of the ball, and the Wolverines unable to convert after that. So now the Wolverines are going to have to go for it on this fourth down, key fourth down situation going into the fourth quarter. And that'll be the final play of quarter number three. So it'll be fourth and four for Woodland Hills with the ball at the Seneca Valley 44 when we start the fourth quarter. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders here on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Serving the Turtle Creek Valley and neighboring Woodland Hills communities for over 110 years, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home now offers crematory services at their Turtle Creek location. Families choosing cremation can have added peace of mind knowing that their loved one never leaves the care of Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home and that their crematory is used exclusively for the families they serve. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Fourth down and about four for Woodland Hills. Make it a fourth and about five for the Wolverines with the ball at the Seneca Valley 44-yard line as we start the fourth quarter. Adam Gusky, Eric Shulian on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Final non-conference tilt of the season for Woodland Hills. And not only is it non-conference, but it's out of classification as Woodland Hills takes on Seneca Valley. Seneca Valley, the Raiders, 6A. Next week, Woodland Hills back to 5A. Ball and will be in conference as they take on the Moon Tigers pair of teams they're two and five going into this week and jockeying for playoff position next week out in the west hills of pittsburgh trips to the right judson pressure wrapped sacked back at the 49 yard line and a big play made there by sage lay a loss of seven on the play and a turnover on downs for woodland hills and the raiders will have the ball they'll say at the midfield stripe it'll be a loss of six yeah just not not at all what you need the Wolverines there and it's very discouraging as they're unable to get it on fourth down and now get the ball back into the hands of the Raiders and they're going to absolutely desperately need a turnover here to get back into it. We saw Seneca Valley absolutely slaughter the clock through the first 12 minutes of the second half. They occupied the vast majority of the third quarter. And they'll look to do the same here as this drive starts just four seconds in to the fourth frame of the game. The Raiders up by 10 on Woodland Hills. The ball at the 50-yard line on the right hash. Quarterback Gabe Lawson will step under center with a one-back set behind him and Matt Stanger. No motion to an offset eye. Handoff goes to the fullback. Not a lot of room initially for that fullback. Jake Meinweiser, and then he'll drive his way into Woodland Hills territory for a pickup of about two. Down at the bottom of the pile is Antoine Meredith for Woodland Hills. Yeah, definitely a tough run there for the Raiders. And a couple missed tackles by the Wolverines results in about three yards for the Raiders. And clock running. 
Got to strip this ball free or do something here. Big play needed. Initially, it looked like uh, the ball carrier had only gotten to the 48, but they'll spot the ball at the 47. And it's second and seven. The line to gain the 40. Ball on the right hash. Offset eye backfield behind quarterback Lawson. He'll hand off to Stanger. Stanger hesitates, then bursts through a hole. Picks up the first down and more inside of the 35. Finally brought down at the 32-yard line. Tackle on the play by Tamar Mason D. Yeah, that was a bit of a dagger there to the Wolverines as they let up a big run, and they're able to give the Raiders a fresh set of downs, and that means that much more clock coming off the board. Trips to the right, one receiver to the near side left, pistol formation. Stanger now settles to the left-hand side of Lawson, who will carry it himself, running to the left. He'll be met as he crosses the line of scrimmage, and Michael Roman makes the tackle at the 30-yard line, a gain of one. Wolverines have done a relatively decent job controlling Gabe Lawson. As I mentioned earlier, he averages over 100 yards a game rushing but they've had their struggles containing other Raiders, men like Stanger and Stebbins in the passing game has been open a lot tonight. 10 minutes to play exactly here in quarter number four. Woodland Hills down 10. Raiders driving the ball inside of the Woodland Hills 30 at the 29. Two receivers to the far boundary right. Wing to the left, handoff goes to Stanger, and Stanger is going to carry the ball Number down towards the 25 for a gain of about four. Tackle made by Antoine, Antoine Meredith. Now the Raiders Antonio have Meredith. basically two opportunities to get this four yards here, as I would think they would go for it, even if they're stopped short or even if they get a loss here, game unless they four. do want to play it really Third safe and try and pooch punt it. Four. But the Wolverines have to make a stop first to put them in that situation. We saw Woodland Hills force a turnover on downs on the Raiders late in the third quarter. The Wolverines, though, turned it right back over to the Raiders a few plays later on a TOD. Third and four for Seneca Valley, the ball at the 25. Two receivers right, handoff, Stanger as he runs to the left. He's got the first down and more. Inside of the 20, brought down at the 18-yard line. Tackle the play by Jay Smith. Just, those draw plays have been working really, really well for Seneca Valley tonight. Breaking through holes all night is Stanger, and that's another dagger to the defense of the Wolverines as time is now under nine minutes, and the Raiders are in the red zone. Raiders break the huddle, send two receivers to the far side right. Straight eye backfield behind Lawson, dotting the eye is Stanger. Handoff to Stanger as he runs to his left. He is undercut basically as he takes the handoff. Tackle made by Sidney Summers. Sidney Summers, big time tackler for the Wolverines. Great play breaking through the gap there. And can stop on Stanger, something we haven't seen too often tonight. Stanger getting hit in the backfield. Second and a dozen for Seneca Valley. The ball at the 29 yard line. Lawson hands off, Stanger up the gut, still driving his way forward, still on his feet, close to first down yardage before finally being wrestled down by Antoine Meredith and then after the play, Jay Smith tosses a Raider to the near boundary. And that's going to tack on enough, at least for the first down, and set up Seneca Valley with a first and goal. Yeah, just Jay Smith with the retaliation there. And you can't do that. you got to keep your cool as Ryan Christoback is jostling with them. They're going back and forth. And then Jay Smith, guilty of throwing him down. Seneca Valley came into the game, allowing seven points per game. That's what Woodland Hills has scored thus far. Raiders have shut out three teams on the season. Fortunately for Woodland Hills, they're not being shut out today. And the Raiders score 22 points per game, and they are approaching that figure now as they have the ball first in goal at the Woodland Hills four-yard line, leading Woodland Hills by 
10, 17 to seven. Lawson looks back to the near sideline. Lots of time on this play clock. And uh, Lawson has time to iron things out here as there was some confusion. Trip to the right, one receiver to the near side left. Lawson taking a lot of time. Finally takes the snap, hands off. Stanger slides through a tackle and into the end zone for Raiders TD. Yeah, made it look easy, Adam. And, you know, Wolverines defense definitely discouraged there. They've been on the field a lot tonight. And they just unable to make a stop there in a key key situation. And unfortunately, the Wolverines are going to go down by three scores here. It's going to be tough. Yeah, right now the deficit is 16 points. A PAT by the sure-footed kicker, Seth Winters, will make it a 17-point affair. He's definitely trying for a little reverse jinx there, Adam. And the PAT is up, and that point after touchdown is good. And with 7-0-1 to play in the fourth frame, Seneca Valley leads Woodland Hills 24-7. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Bush Brothers Car Care Center in Swissvale has been a Monongahela Avenue institution for over 30 years. Bush Brothers is a full-service mechanic and tire shop for all types of vehicles. Whether you need mechanical work, an alignment, state inspection and emissions testing, new tires, or just an oil change, Bush Brothers is the place for you. Bush Brothers Car Care Center, Monongahela Avenue in Swissvale, or give Martin and Jason a call at 412-351-5342. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. We're at Next Tier Stadium in Harmony, Pennsylvania, the home of the Seneca Valley Raiders, and the host Raiders lead the visiting Wolverines 24-7 with 7.01 to play in quarter number four. Raiders scoring on a four-yard touchdown run by number four, Matt Stanger. Stanger, his second touchdown of the game. Winters kick down to the nine, where it'll be returned by William Clark. Clark running left across the 25, where he's hit hard, still able to drive his way out towards the 30 before he's brought to the turf. Number 21, Ethan West on the tackle. Tackle on the play by Ethan West. And it'll be first and 10 for Woodland Hills. Right around the 30. You know, down by three scores would be very difficult for the Wolverines to get into this, get back into this game. But you want to see them build up some confidence going into next week against Moon, a key conference game. As we said earlier, if they want to slip their way into the playoffs, they got to have that one. So here's an opportunity to build some momentum into next week. Judson looking left, throwing left, the pass bobbled and then caught by. Jaden Lucas, and Lucas is brought down after a gain of a yard or two. Brought down by number 22, Evan Smith. Gain of Evan Smith one, on the tackle for the Raiders, and, and it's second and nine for Seneca Valley, or rather for Woodland Hills with the ball at their own 32-yard line. Really like to see the Marines try some patterns over the middle a little bit more, go down the field. These out routes not doing too much. Raiders are covering them very well. Trips to the left, one receiver to the near side right. Judson pressured, retreating, losing yardage, and he'll be wrapped and brought down. And they're going to say that uh, he ultimately was met at the 16 before driven back a few yards, but it's still going to be a huge loss on the play. The line to gain is the 41. The ball is placed at the 16, so it's third down and 25. And just a four-man rush, Adam, but... Again, this inexperienced, undersized line for the Wolverines are doing all they can, but they have had trouble tonight in containing this big lineman for the Raiders. Yeah, when you look at Seneca Valley across the front of that defensive line, 6'2", 285, Drew Robertson, who made that play, he, among others, have certainly been cogs in a big wheel across that front. Judson rolling left, and he's going to toss it to the near side left, and... Uh, Unfortunately for Woodland Hills, that ball was caught on the near sideline by Makai Jackson. Jackson would have been well served to just swat that ball to the floor. It was a heady play by Judson. He only saw one white jersey over there and tossed the ball out to Jackson, but Jackson caught it. 
And the junior, if he'd have dumped that to the turf, it would have been fourth down and 25 at the 16. Instead, it's fourth down and 30 at the 11. So big punt here for Chucky Hanchett, hopefully. We'll back Seneca Valley up, but uh, right now the Raiders return men are standing at the Woodland Hills 40, and it'll be fair caught at the 44 by Brennan Hayes. And Seneca Valley has the ball in good field position. See what the flag is here. They'll be holding against Seneca Valley, so that's going to back them up 10 from the end of the play. And as mentioned before, Adam, the Wolverines have to shake this game off. It's a non-conference game. It doesn't mean anything for the playoffs. Let me take a look at the standings here. West Allegheny atop the conference at 5-1. USC is 3-1, as is Peters Township and Bethel Park. Baldwin 2-3. Moon is 1-3 within Allegheny 8 conference play. Woodland Hills 1-4 within the conference. And then Char Valley down at the bottom at 0-4 within conference play. So obviously Woodland Hills has to uh, leap some hurdles to try to make it into the playoff picture through the final two weeks of the season. And we know 16 out of 24 teams make the playoffs in 5A. So they still have a shot. Yeah, five, Seneca Valley in for sure in 6A. Five teams out of each conference and then one wild card. Woodland Hills has a better shot, at a shot out of conference than they do at that wild card at this point. Josh Rawlings makes the tackle as Matt Stanger, the ball carrier, gets to the line of scrimmage and no further. Now you look back at him, some missed opportunities for the Wolverines in this game. That, that drop pass by Josh Rawlings, who's unable to track it and bring it in. That ripped the ball ripped away by Mike Roman as he had full greenery in front of him and a quick whistle took that away. Just And then that catch by Mike Coleman here in the second half that with a bad spot. Just some tough breaks for the Wolverines. Trips right, one receiver to the near side left. The ball carrier for Seneca Valley the second time today. Number Jake Meinweiser carries the ball. To number 26, Jake Meinweiser. Meinweiser picks up a yard across the 46 to the 47 yard line. New QB in there for Seneca Valley is Caden Smithco, 5'11 junior. And the Raiders early in the season when they played Central Catholic, losing that game by only six points, had to play without the talented quarterback Gabe Lawson. So if they're able to see them again in the playoffs, they, I'm sure they would give them a great game. Same thing with N.A., losing that game by four points. They've got a tough game next week against Pine Richland. Twins left, wing to the right. Handoff goes to Mineweiser again, and is going to get out to the 50, but no further. Tackle on the play by Devine Clark. So a three-yard gain brings up fourth down and six. Raiders are going to bring the field goal unit, or rather the uh, punt unit on. I said field goal unit because for the first time today, we're going to see Seth Winters come out to punt. We only saw one Raider punt earlier in this game. That was Gabe Lawson who pooch punted it away. But this time they're going to send the big leg of Seth Winters out to punt this one. Winters standing at his own 35. Jaden Lucas, the return man for the Wolverines. Low snap. Winters gathers it in. High end over end kick. Bounces initially in favor of Woodland Hills and then is kicked by Seneca Valley in favor of the Raiders, but it'll be spotted where the first touch by the Raiders was. It'll be first and 10 for Woody High at the 34-yard line. Yeah, as we mentioned, Adam, with those average points, it's kind of worked out exactly like that. We said if Seneca Valley averaging 22 points a game, they scored 24. Average giving up seven about. They give up seven in this game, so it went right about by the book, did this game. Just about what we expected, too. Two strong defenses, but the Wolverines faltering a little bit more in the second half. Unable to ever get anything going here in the second half. Judson rolling to his right-hand side. Steps forward and throws to the near boundary. It's caught. It's Jay Smith with the football. He's got the first down. He's got a block. He's across the 45. Inside of the 40, still on his feet to the 30-yard line. And he'll finally be brought down inside of the Raiders 30 at the 29. That's when you see the speed and agility and athleticism of a guy like Jay Smith. and He's just blowing past guys. 
on the Raiders defense. Certainly some subs in here for the for the for Seneca Valley, but he's been doing that most of the night when he's got the ball in his hands. Seneca Valley first and ten, Woodland Hills. Some of the Raider fans making their way out of the stadium. Their team leading our Wolverines by 17 points, 24 to 7. Clock under two minutes to play. Willen Hill sends trips to the right, one receiver to the far side left. Judson. Pressured, runs to his left. He's going to tuck. He's going to run to that far sideline. He's going to step out of bounds. Forced to the far boundary by a Raider. But Gavin Judson picks up a handful of yards. To the 25, will be a pick up a four, in fact, and it's second and six. Nice block there by William Clark. Got hit pretty hard, but he stood stood his ground there against the Raider and was able to give Judson the opportunity to break out of the pocket there. And sh showcase his legs a little bit. So it's second down and six for Woodland Hills at the Raiders' 25-yard line. Punch to the right, one receiver to the far side left. Judson running to his right hand side, throws to the near side to Lucas. Lucas will step out of bounds after picking up the first down for Woodland Hills at around the 18 yard line. Yeah, nice scramble there by Judson and a nice pass and catch between the two, Judson and Lucas, getting out of bounds, preserving some clock, and maybe the Wolverines able to get one more in here, make the score look a little bit more respectable. I mean, quite frankly, when you're stepping from a 5A team to take on a 6A team, you're on the road against a team that has, you know, not exponentially, but a significantly deeper bench than you have. And you go on the road after a long road trip and you represent yourself pretty well, especially in half number one. Definitely. Judson looking left the whole way out of the shotgun. And uh, the pass over to that far sideline intended for Lucas. Now, Jared Nabry really didn't break on that football. All the defensive back for Seneca Valley, had he broken on that football, I think Nabry would have had an opportunity to come out of there with an INT. Yeah, he wasn't didn't quite pick his head up to find that ball, or else he could have had a big interception. But Judson and the Wolverines offense gets, gets another shot here on second down. Just under a minute to play here. 17-point lead for Seneca Valley. Two receivers split to either side. Sidecar to the left of Judson. One-handed grip, picked up an Aaron snap, and now he's going to take off running to his right-hand side. Close to the first down as he steps out of bounds inside of the 10, and a flag comes in late. And now some talking and jawing going on after the play is over. Connor Hayes had something to say to Michael Coleman when the play was over. That doesn't draw a flag, but there was a flag over here on this near sideline right as the play ended. And it's a personal foul, and it's against Woodland Hills personal for helmet-to-helmet -to -helmet contact. contact against Woodland Hills. So that play ended at around the nine. It would have been second and one. But after the penalty, Woodland Hills is going to be pushed back 15 yards from the spot of the foul. So that's back to the 25. I'm taking a look at that replay. I'm not sure there was any helmet to helmet there. It looked like it might have been a bit of a late, late hit. I'm not quite sure why it was helmet to helmet, but maybe we just didn't get a great look at the replay. Opportunity to go to Mike Coleman here in single coverage. A D1 athlete in Mike Coleman against a backup for the Raiders. Bunch to the right. Coleman all by himself over to that left-hand side. Toss to Lucas. Lucas gathers it in around his knees, and he'll be driven down right around the 17, make it the 18-yard line, so a pickup of seven, and the clock will continue to wind here with 33 seconds to play. If they're not going to use one of their timeouts here, it might be the last play, Adam, is they're just going to let the clock run. Gavin Judson in the Third shotgun. He'll send one receiver to the near side right. Trips to the left. Judson rolls to his right. Throws to his right. The pass is caught by Michael Coleman. Coleman curls, drives his way. He's got the first down with one second to go. And the officials, they may put another second on the clock here, but the officials are going to say it's irrelevant with a two-score or a three-score game. And they will let the clock expire. And Seneca Valley defeats Woodland Hills by a score of 24 
to seven. We're going to step away real quickly when we return our post-game coverage. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Life has its ups and downs. There are times when you or a loved one needs help. That's why you should know the name LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center. Located just minutes from the Monroeville Mall, the LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, has been known by locals for many years, and they excel in reputation, rehabilitation, recuperation, and residential living. The help and answers you need are just a phone call away at 412-825-9000. Also on the web at lgar.org. LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, a a name you should know, and a name you can trust. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Woodland Hills falling to Seneca Valley by a final score of 24-7. to Adam Gusky and Eric Shuley on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. And Eric, Woodland Hills was down by just three points when they went into the locker room. But the Wolverines' first offensive drive of the half was a three and out, and Seneca Valley was able to eat up a whole lot of clock in the third quarter, got a couple of scores in that second half, and ended up winning, going away against Woodland Hills 24-7. Yeah, it was a great showing, as you mentioned, Adam, in the first half. The Wolverines able to keep it within three with that quick, big, quick score at the end of the half. But the second half came out a little bit lifeless, and they, they played well, but they were just unable to get anything going offensively, and the defense just got a little bit worn down, and unfortunately they fall. But, as we mentioned before, non-conference, they have a chance to regroup and get a big win next week over Moon to try and get into the playoffs in the la at the last second. Yeah, Woodland Hills got some work to do. They've got the Moon Tigers next week, and then the following week they've got uh, the Chartiers Valley Colts. So, Woodland Hills, they've got to get some help. They've got to beat Moon next week. They've got to win in the final week of the season. They do all that. You know, maybe they get some help and make it into the playoffs. But right now, they've got their back up against it with just two wins on the season and just one win in conference. Certainly, but they are winnable games. Next week on the road, that'll be tough. A couple years ago, a very close call against Moon. I'm sure you remember that game, Adam. But they, hopefully this year they're able to be a little more comfortable and get a win over Moon and then come back home for, for Senior Rec, get a win over Chartiers Valley would be great to maybe get in the playoffs. And you never know, even, even though you would most likely face a tough team like McKee Sport or Pentraff or Gateway Penn Hill, somebody like that. Our post-game coverage continues in just a moment. Woodland Hills falls to Seneca Valley by a final score of 24-7. Back in a couple of minutes, it's the Wolverines and the Raiders post-game coverage here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd District since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 412-241-6690 or log on to SenatorCosta.com. The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale is a proud sponsor of the Wolverines and has been serving the Woodland Hills community for nearly three quarters of a century. The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swissvale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're going to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home with locations in East Pittsburgh and Turtle Creek is a member of the Hall of Excellence of the National Funeral Directors Association. This reflects the same pursuit of excellence by our Woodland Hills football team, cheerleaders, marching band, students, staff, and faculty. For over 110 years, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been honored to serve local families and to be a proud partner of the Woodland Hills communities. Life has its ups and downs. There are times when you or a loved one needs help. That's why you should know the name LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center. Located just minutes from the Monroeville Mall, the LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, has been known by locals for many years, and they excel in reputation, rehabilitation, recuperation, and residential living. The help and answers you need are just a phone call away at 412-825-9000. Also on the web at lgar.org. LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, a name you should know and a name you can trust. 
You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Woodland Hills falls to Seneca Valley by a final score of 24 to 7. Adam Gusky and Eric Shuley on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Time to start some of our post-game superlatives, and we're going to start off with our uh, attorney Owen Seaman defensive stand of the game, and. Uh, Obviously, the William Clark interception that was nearly returned for a touchdown. He carried all the way down to the one-yard line. And while Woodland Hills didn't get any points out of that particular offensive possession, on the ensuing offensive possession, they scored their lone touchdown in the game. Yeah, it was just a big play. A great return by William Clark, too. As you said, we weren't able to get in the end zone on the interception or the the next couple plays. But after they forced the punt, the Woodland Hills defense, they were able to get in on that nice pass from Judson to Coleman. And that's a nice lead-in to the play of the game, Adam. Yeah, and that's the touchdown pass from Gavin Judson to Michael Coleman. And that is our Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home play of the game, that 28-yard uh, TD. Yeah, it was big. It got the Wolverines on the board, created some momentum into the half. And like as we know, the result wasn't able to carry over into the second half. But still a good showing by the Wolverines here tonight against a tough, tough 618. Now we're continuing to deliberate who our State Senator Jay Costa player of the game is. So we're going to take our final time out of the postgame show. And when we return in two minutes, we'll let you know who that is. And we'll get you set for next week when Woodland Hills takes on the Moon Tigers. One more time, Woodland Hills falls here against Seneca Valley by a final score of 24-7. to It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Woodland Hills football is brought to you in part by the law offices of Owen Seaman. Owen is a Woodland Hills alumnus who studied law at Duquesne University and has been practicing law in the Pittsburgh area for over 15 years. Attorney Owen Seaman's experience encompasses virtually every facet of criminal defense. If you find yourself in need of criminal defense representation, call Owen at 412-721-0412 or visit owenthelawyer.com. There are a few things that guys like more than a great haircut at a real barber shop. And at the Barber's Inn on Washington Avenue in Swissvale, you'll find both. Plus, you can relax in style on supple leather sofas while watching their big screen HD TV. You can even shoot some pool while you wait. But most importantly, you'll walk out the door with a haircut or shave that you're sure to love. Walk-ins are always welcome at the Barber's Inn. For more information, call 412-271-7434. And remember, real men come to the Barber's Inn. LG3 Entertainment is a first-class disc jockey and karaoke entertainment company that serves the Pittsburgh and surrounding areas. They offer a wide range of music entertainment for weddings, anniversaries, school dances, corporate events, and more. They also offer beautiful chair cover linen rentals to give your event the elegance it deserves. They offer many more services, so go to their website today and see why so many choose LG3 Entertainment for the best in family fun entertainment. Whether you need a new website or want to improve your existing site, Web Landings can serve your needs. Web Landings provides professional, easy-to-maintain websites for businesses, organizations, and individuals. Discover more at weblandings.com and find out how editing your site can be as easy as using a word processor. Plus, we offer one year of free hosting for any website developed. Visit weblandings.com today. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Final segment of the postgame show as Woodland Hills falls to Seneca Valley by a final score of 24-7. Adam Gusky and Eric Shuley on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. With the loss, Woodland Hills is now 2-6 and six on the season, while Seneca Valley improves their record to 6-2 and two on the year. Of course, Seneca Valley out of 6A. They remain 4-2 and two within 6A play, while Woodland Hills 1-4 and four within conference play. And while we were off the air, we took a look at uh, some updates, and it looks like the Moon Tigers are going to fall to Upper St. Clair, so that's going to give them their fourth conference loss of the season. So Woodland Hills and Moon next week going to go in at 1-4. and four. Yeah, the, both coming in at 1-4, and four, that's gives uh, the Wolverines a great opportunity to get a win and move to 2-4 and four in conference because Moon has a tough West Allegheny team after that, although we know West Allegheny was only up 10-7 to seven against Hampton in a non-conference game tonight. I think it was in the third quarter. So you never know, Moon could win that game, but the Wolverines have to take care of their business. 
Now, looking back to the last segment, we talked about some of our post-game superlatives, namely the Attorney Owen Seaman defensive stand of the game, which was the interception by William Clark that took the ball down to the Seneca Valley one-yard line. And then on the ensuing offensive drive, Woodland Hills came up empty. But then on the drive after that, the Wolverines scored a touchdown on our Patrick T. Landing and Funeral Home play of the game, the 28-yard touchdown pass to Michael Coleman from Gavin Judson. And now it's time to name our State Senator Jay Costa player of the game. And it's the aforementioned Michael Coleman who had at least three receptions today, one of which was the touchdown. He had a big reception at the end of uh, the football game, which nearly got Woodland Hills down into the end zone before we stopped shy just inside of the 10-yard line. And he had that big catch in uh, the third quarter that had it been marked for a first down, could have changed the whole momentum of this football game, but instead it was determined to be a seven-yard gain instead of the nine-yard gain in the first down. Yeah, that would have been a big, big play for the Wolverines had they been able to get that spot in the first down. They were unable to, but nonetheless, Mike Coleman had a good game for the Wolverines. He's all over the field, a very strong, talented Div Division One athlete going to Toledo next year. So congratulations to Mike Coleman tonight. Yeah, he is our State Senator Jay Costa player of the game for the first time this season. Well, that'll do it for our coverage of the Wolverines and the Seneca Valley Raiders. Woodland Hills falls by a score of 24 to 7. For Eric Schuling and our entire broadcast crew, I'm Adam Gusky. Thank you for thanking you for joining us tonight. We'll talk to you again next week as the Woodland Hills Wolverines travel to Moon Township to take on the Moon Area Tigers. You've been tuned in to the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Today's broadcast of Wolverine Football was presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Wolverine Football is also brought to you by the Triangle Barn Grill, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home, LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center, the Law Offices of Owen Seaman, Bush Brothers Car Care, the Barbers Inn in Swissville, LG3 Entertainment, Web Landings, a Boss Opticians, Matthews Auto Service, and DeZubin Dental Associates. This broadcast has been a presentation of A.W. Gusky Productions and LG3 Entertainment. Copyright 2018.